tuning in to today's video. This is the third Times of Charm video, so if you hear any annoying audio issues or if it's a little bit of a strain to understand what we're saying, please just bear with us because the information is so important. As a special guest today, I have my friend Tyler Blackwell, who those of you who followed the cult of Nityananda might re remember as Sri Nitya Parantapananda. I'm so happy that he has broken free from that mental bondage and is ready to open up. But like I said, we're having some weird audio issues with Zoom and then Facebook Messenger and now even on Skype. But we're just going to go for it anyway because it's too important to share what he has to share. So Tyler, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah it's my great pleasure. to reconnect. It really is. It's crazy what we've been through together, but yeah, I'm eager to hear everything you have to say about your journey. Um, okay, so before I get into any of that, I know that uh, having like now that this video is being made, I know that I am classified by Kailasa or the Nityananda Sangha or whatever you want to call it at this point. I am now going to be looked at as an abuser. Um, I just want to let all of you guys know that all of the whole Guru Droha threats, the fear tactics, the yeah, basically all the fear tactics, like being afraid to lose your spiritual abilities and powers, uh, feeling like you're going to be damned for all eternity and have to come back in like a million genmas and find a guru. All of that stuff is completely fabricated because I've felt like way better energetically since taking off my Kantamala and really like coming back into my personal sovereignty, which I mean, after researching how cults actually operate, that fear tactic of just saying something that's going to get you so afraid to leave that you just won't, even if you don't vibe with the whole situation, that's commonly used in like a ton of different cults. And you can go and do research on that. And that's actually what, like all that stuff, that's what's making me make this video right now because it's so messed up that in a, a in a spiritual community that's supposed to be for enlightenment, there should be no fear tactics like that. There shouldn't be any, like if somebody is whistleblowing and they saw something messed up that's a dharmic and that should not be happening, that's just like totally out of alignment with how the cosmos runs itself in general, they should be able to talk about that publicly without getting completely scrutinized. But it's the complete opposite with the Nityananda Sangha, literally, like, I'm fully prepared to get character assassinated at this point. I've seen it happen. It pops up on my Facebook feed all the time because I follow all of those Facebook groups and all of the Sangha groups from when I was in Adi Navasi. I've been watching it for years now. I know what they do. I know what I'm in for. And I'm telling you guys, it's all lies. And it's honestly just because we, like, the people who interview on Sarah's channel, like her and everybody else who's done an interview on her channel, they're not demons. They're not Rakshasas. They're genuinely good hearted people. And honestly, like they all, if you really use critical thinking and watch their videos, watch all of those interviews with an open mind, you're going to see that they are a lot more alive and happy than they were, were when they were in the cult. And I don't know. I just feel like I need to make that statement. Like, you should be afraid if you feel like you want to leave, but you're scared because you're scared to lose your liberation and all that. You're not going to. I promise you. Like, I was a power manifester. I was I was really integrated when I was a sannyasi, and I I know for sure. Like, that's how I thought at that time. I was really afraid for a long time, and there's nothing to be afraid about. So, with that being said, yeah. We can, go on to whatever comes next. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tyler. Thank you for starting with that, because I think one of the questions that I've seen pop up from the time of Lenin and Ardi Rao is like, if there really are so many victims or so many bad things are going on in the cult, 
why are only two people coming forward? Why isn't anybody reporting what happened to them? And I think you hit the nail on the head. There's there's like a trifold fear tactic, a trifecta, as we used to say uh. in the cult. And of the cult will say, like, you'll be destroyed if you speak out. You'll lose your connection to the cosmos. You'll lose your liberation. The second is the legal threat fear. There will be a kid to put a fake rape case on you if you speak out. And then the third is the mm -hmm. character assassination. You're afraid of being publicly defamed and having all kinds of things from your past twisted and skewed to suit their narrative to make people think that you're a bad, not credible person. So I just want to applaud your bravery because when I went public, I had no idea that they were going to demonize me to the level that they did. And so I feel like anybody who speaks out now, knowing that they're capable of stooping to that low, like you're even more brave, um, especially maintaining some friendships with people who are in that state right now. So that's really commendable. So thank you. Yeah. Um, well, thank you as well for also being brave and even through all of the crazy character assassination and being called like a cult leader, a sex addict, like literally anybody who's a guy that you have on the channel, they say that you have sex with them yeah. eight times a day. <laughs> like most men can't even do that. It's like such a bullshit lie. Um, you've just gone and done this for years now yeah. and they just keep coming up with new character assassination assassination for you and you keep going anyways yeah and that honestly it just shows that like deep down you are sharing the truth and you have good heart for it like yeah. there's no demon that would go through all of this struggle just for like i don't know personal gain like you're really not getting much from it other than helping your old friends and people in the future who may have like connected to Nithya Ananda like, open their eyes to what's really going on within yeah. his organization. Exactly. Like, you're not paid. Nobody is paid that yeah. makes these videos. Honestly, I feel like most of us are in debt because we're trying to rebuild our lives since True. getting out of the cult and everything. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, even like when I do videos about tarot readings and crystals and my my sort of draw with me art videos, I get a little bit of money from those because it's monetized with Google AdSense. So I might get like 10 bucks mm. for a video. But the cult whistleblowing videos are automatically demonetized because it's talking about sensitive subject matter that advertisers won't get behind. So I'm not even getting Google AdSense for this shit. Like this is just pure volunteer work because I feel personally responsible to everyone who my videos recruited into that cult. And I think if it had just been me personally getting abused, like Nitti having his sexual assault towards me, I probably would have just moved on with my life and forgotten about it. But knowing that the kids got beaten, that's just too far for me. And then finding out how many other victims he had who just kept quiet out of fear. It kind We're of still keeping me... quiet. We're still keeping quiet. Other than Jordan, how brave he was to go public. Other than him. Yeah, the other victims are all keeping quiet. And I feel like, you know, once we've broken that silence publicly, what more can they do? They've already accused me of raping three people, trying to poison the cult leader, starting my own cult, being a sex addict, um, getting paid by the Vatican. Like they've already, they oh, they're now, they're accusing me of the cultural genocide against the First Nations people of Canada. So there's that. Like anything more that they accuse me of just becomes ridiculous. So yeah. why? going to stop all speaking. the anti-hindu stuff it's ridiculous yeah. like i'm sure you have deities probably like right on your desk with your computer or at least like somewhere close to you like i have my deities here like i have my lost wax casting method made authentic shri chakra here which yeah. is energized like there's no way i'm giving my connection up to mm -hmm. spirituality and to deities and to hinduism this i really 
I'm here and I, I wanted to do this and I reached out to Sarah because honestly, like if Nityananda is going to go on and on about the four tatwas and vows of sannyas and all of the things, especially integrity, integrity mm -hmm. to like Dharma and everything, I feel like I can't really say like in my own personal integrity to my myself and my soul. The, per if the person who I saw as my guru is being out of the integrity with the cosmos. I feel like I need to say something about it because yeah. that is so messed up. Like that's, it's one thing like to, it's one thing to go and do the things that he's doing and just be like a normal narci narcissist and kind of like a sociopath with all of that type of stuff. Um, and to not claim your God, then you're just like a regular cult, cult leader. But mm -hmm. to really like encourage people to build a feeling connection with you and to say like, I'm going to make you experience God, but you have to do all of these things. Like you have to be celibate. You have to always tell the truth. You can't steal. You can't lie. Um, you have to live with minimal things all of that type of stuff. It's like, where do you draw the line if your so quote unquote guru is literally breaking every single one of those rules or vows? Yeah. And especially telling you that you can't even, you can't even do your own research. You can't look up and see what the whistleblowers are saying or you become a demon. Like that is the surefire sign that there is messed up stuff going on because if the, he didn't do anything wrong, he would be way more transparent. Like, think about it, you guys. Nobody has any idea what Swamiji is actually doing in his personal life. Everybody just trusts him so completely that they don't even question it. But it's like he's on satsang very rarely now anyways. He's, they say he's in Samadhi, but like the only proof of that is like he takes a picture of his hand writing on a piece of paper. It's like, how easy is that to fabricate if you wanted to fabricate something? Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is if he did not do anything wrong, he would be able to be completely transparent. He would have gone to court back in 2010 like a normal person who was getting summoned, and he would have won the court case without any worries in an enlightened state. But he didn't. He freaked out. He avoided getting served. He like literally destroyed the lives of the people who were whistleblowing against him. And that's just like, for me, that's enough to just be like, okay, that is too messed up. I cannot consider that being enlightened or my guru. It's too out of alignment. Um, also, just so you guys know, um, that video that he claims is morphed is indeed not morphed. They're going to show you, if you're an Adi Navasi or in the Sangha, they're not going to show you the real one. The real one is on YouTube. Go look it up. You will see Nityananda getting head from Ranjita. Their body language is like, they're super comfortable with each other. There's no possible way that it's faked, that it's morphed or anything. Like they're using genuine human body language. There's I feel like the only way they would possibly be able to fake that type of thing is if they like computer generated one of the per the people, which obviously you would, even with today's technology, you're going to know that it's a computer generated person. Um, so he's just been lying. He's been lying to everybody since the beginning. You guys do your own research, like stop just being afraid to lose your liberation and go and look up all of the things that the whistleblowers are saying with an open mind and an open heart and a really strong, like courageous love for yourself to have self acceptance for yourself. If you do come to the conclusion that you've totally been duped and you've been duped for a long ass time and you've sacrificed your life and your money and everything else to it, you have to go into it being willing to, you have to be able to face that reality fearlessly. But then once you do, you'll know the truth. And like us, you're going to realize like, oh, shit, I'm not losing any of my powers. I'm not destroyed. Honestly, like 
I have such a better relationship with existence now, not having a guru. My my relationship with life has changed in general. Like I feel so much more close to myself to the point where I honestly feel like being with Nityananda was like an energy block, like some type of energetic wall between me and the rest of the cosmos. And now that that's gone, I just feel like my chakras are way more open. And I'm not getting paid to say this, like we said. I have no vested interest. Like, literally, I'm just telling the truth here. I'm probably going to have to put up with a whole lot of shit after I'm, I've made this video. And I'm just doing it because I feel like that is the dharmic thing to do as a sincere spiritual seeker. Amen to that. Or, like, to toss you to that. Because <laughs> I don't want to say amen so to that. I don't think it's Catholic lingo, even though it's just Western yeah. speak. But... Yeah, it's not only like when you were describing the wall between yourself and the cosmos, I think we had chatted a bit about how he's also a wall between anybody who obeys his instructions and just living life normally. Like, remember you yeah. had mentioned to me how he'll say, like, be your own boss, because if you work for somebody else, you are fulfilling their dream, not yo yours. So be your own boss to manifest wealth, but you're not allowed to do business with anybody in Sangha, and you're not supposed to- And then to don't do talk to anybody else but the people in Sangha. Exactly. So like, he makes come it on. possible to earn money, and therefore he can grab everyone as slaves to his cult. Because if you can't make money in the outer world, might as well become an Adi Navasi. And I, I love how you describe that, Tyler, that he makes it impossible to earn a living. And also he, he makes us feel like there's only two options in life, either be a sannyasi, which is like be an indentured slave to him, or get married yeah. and have 10 kids and give all of them to his gurukul. And nobody- and this is all while, remember the sannyas, chat when we were both, when you were a brahmacharya and I was a brahmacharya, Remember being a part of that Sanyas chat and him literally in capital letters saying all Grahistas are shit in that yeah. chat. And he was literally like leading us all on as Sanyatis to just become like the most like superiority complex influence yeah. assholes ever. And people would just walk like this. I said this in my own video on my channel, like we would just walk around like we're the best beings in the universe. It wasn't really pure hearted oneness in a space of like whoever you're in front of you just have unconditional love for them. That's real sannyas. He exactly. was not teaching us that space. Yeah, you're right. And he created a spiritual ego in everybody. And it's hard for me to watch back videos of myself speaking when I was in that brainwashed state. Yeah. Like, oh, if you watch. Yeah, it's triggering. Um, yeah. The third it's embarrassing, too. Very. It, it just, it's so like I've watched some of my old videos and it's I just cringe the entire time. Me too. And a lot of it is just because we were told to say a lot of stuff that wasn't even our experience yet. Yeah. So I just feel like I was just like spouting out things and influencing people's lives when I literally had no idea what I was talking about experientially. Yeah. Some of it, yes, but other other parts of it, no. Um, the other thing is like, it's kind of ironic and funny how like back then, um, he would talk so much shit about the Grahistas and like, you can go watch the Sanyas webinar and how he would say like, like taking the Grahista path to get enlightened is like walking, um, from like Antarctica to India, or not Antarctica, like from the North Pole to India or something like that, or like the United States to India. Technically it can be done. But is it probable? No. But that's like such an extreme example to where like if you're already married and you have kids, that's just gonna make you feel like shit. And then he goes and he gets stuck in a corner because he did all the shit and he fled the country, fled the country of India, and now he makes Kailasa. And now he's like, Oh, I, I actually love you guys. I need you all to have ten kids and send them to Gurukul. Yeah. It's like love is only there when it's convenient for him, when it comes down to it. And I know like this is a type of stuff. This is like really triggering for people who are still in the Sangha who deeply love him because I loved him too, you guys. I know. I know what the triggering stuff is. Like when someone tells you like he's at the guru that you have given your soul to is manipulating you, the first instinct that you're going to have is being like, no, that person's a liar. I don't care. I'm going by my experience and this love that I feel in my heart. 
that's all that's going to guide me. But I'm telling you guys, you need to take a step back, come back and do some critical thinking because that love that you have in your heart for him could be taken towards existence or to at least some other group that's not going to be like manipulating you in some form or another or making you take like vows and have such unrealistic expectations for you. Absolutely. To make you basically feel guilted all the time. Like yeah. That's another thing. It's like, I don't think when it comes to the thing about uh, how he, how he wants us to generate money because those um, contradictory guru rocks are so like ridiculous. I think that most people don't even follow that, but they carry this like deep guilt and insecurity that like, oh my God, I'm not aligning to the groove of all the groove rock and there's nothing I can do about it because I have to make money and I have to survive in society. Now there's inflation and everything's so expensive and I just have to take care of my life, but I'm going to violate the groove rock no matter what. And this just creates this perpetual cognitive dissonance and guilt. And you're basically just gaslighting yourself by keeping yourself in that situation. All while he is telling you, stop gaslighting yourself, which is making you want to go closer towards him. Mm -hmm. It's like everything is like the reverse logic compared to what it actually should be. And that's that's how he's controlling people, man. It's it's so sad. Like I've I know like I'm talking for a while and I'm kind of going on a rant here. But like, Sarah, I went back like yesterday and I was looking at your pictures on Facebook because you still had pictures of when you were a Brahmacharini in the cult. And it's I remember the good parts of it, looking at those yeah. photos. I remember everybody is like wide smiles. Everybody's like it's family vibes. Everybody's like in love with life and everything. Or so you think yeah. that you're in love with life and you're doing the best thing for yourself. And I get that. I get that like there is that aspect to it, but on a deeper level, there's some dark shit going on. Exactly. It's not right. It's no. not right. It's like it's it's so messed up and such a cunning evil tactic to put people in a situation like that where they feel so close to God and so close to heaven, but they're never actually gonna have the breakthrough to get into it. Because the whole thing is the whole entire thing is like set up to just get you to work constantly and everything else like you're nobody in the sangha is actually truly enlightened no otherwise like if they were enlightened they would do the same thing they would just be like oh my god like he's so out of integrity from what he's saying and they would leave exactly and you know about the big wide smiles and the happy vibes and the family feeling and like we found mm -hmm. our tribe a lot of that was instruction like niti told us mm -hmm. When you go live on Facebook, big happy smiles, tell everyone how wonderful life is. Even if you don't feel that way, fake it till you make it. And the more happy- yeah, I definitely remember that part. He would tell us, fake it till you make it. If you act enlightened, you'll become enlightened. If you tell people that life here is bliss, life will be bliss. If you fall into the self-pity pattern or the SDHD, self-doubt, self-hatred, self-denial, you will create a reality that gives you reasons to be depressed. And so we would do all of these videos acting like we had won the cosmic lottery to be there because we had been conned into believing if we tell people this place is great, that will make the place great. And so he had such a cunning strategy to convince the public that his slaves were happy because he had all of us shouting all over social media how happy we were to be there but it's just like you said like we are so much happier after escaping because now we get to do what we actually want to do like if i have a bad day I have no I, guilt about it either no guilt about it like even if, if I, you have a low day you still don't have to have guilt about it you don't have to be like oh god i'm attracting this space of incompletion i'm just like destroying myself and now i have to chant mahavakya for eight hours Oh, God, exactly. And here's the other thing. There's no such thing as incompletion. That's just the Scientology bullshit that got translated yeah. into landmark technology that the second Mamanisha made into the inner awakening syllabus. We're all complete. Like, this is the big secret that Nitti would never want any of his followers to know. 
you are already a complete being in and of yourself. There's no more completion to add to make you complete. And like, as for sacred Sanata, sanata Dharma, like listen to the Purna Mantra, like Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamida Shyate. It's like you take the whole away from the whole, each one remains whole. It's still the whole. It's still the whole. There's no, there's no, if you take the whole away from the whole, it's an incomplete version of the whole. But if it does completion, it's going to become the whole. No, like the whole is the whole. And yeah. so, Itty, mm -hmm. um, I, I equate it to imagine if somebody robbed your bank account, took all your money, and then told you, hey, I have what you're looking for. Beg me, surrender to me, do what I say, and I'll give you I'll give you little little pittance here and there to support you. You're not going to be grateful to that person. You'll be like, hey, fuck you. You robbed me and now you want me to beg to get my money back. That's what Nityananda does to people's consciousness. He convinces people that they're bankrupt and that they have to go to him for little bits of energy or little bits of bliss or little bits of completion. Meanwhile, they were and charges them a hundred, like 21 grand just to get liberated. Like, come on, you guys, 21 yeah. grand. Yeah. That's or a like shit ton of money. 250 and grand if they want to be Sarvagnipita Yajamans, or a million if they want to be Karta. Yeah, if you want to be Karta, it's oh, crazy. Yeah. It is. Like, yeah. especially because, like, Parma Shivoham level three, he's literally just pocketing all of that money. Because, like, in their awakening, at least, like, you get put up in a hotel, they pay for your food, all of that type of stuff. There's, ex there's business expenses to it. This yeah. program, you're on a free Zoom link. There's no excuse for it, other yeah. than he's being greedy at this point. Yeah. Well, and here's the other thing he does. His, like, how you said at the beginning of this video, Tyler, that he's taken these five vows, like minimum possessions, non-stealing, non-violence, celibacy, truthfulness. He's broken all of them. And he breaks them in such a sleazy way that people are convinced it's their dirty western mind that sees him as having broken them like i remember I mean, that's like a classic cult leader narcissist mentality like if you actually go look it up on the internet like that's the same mentality that jim jones had that's the same mentality that keith Trenier had this is not a new thing he probably learned from those guys he did i mean he he definitely he learned from l ron hubbard and I remember yeah, you, actually on the I'm sorry to cut you off, but like okay. I just want to say this. Um, if you go to the YouTube channel called Guru Droha, um, they actually have a video which is now deleted off of Nityananda's channel for obvious reasons, <laughs> where you can hear him praising L. Ron Hubbard, calling him a Rishi and saying that Scientology is like a great contribution to society. Yeah. So like he knew damn well what Scientology was, the whole pyramid scheme of it, how it indoctrinates people and traps them, and they end up trying, just paying like millions of dollars just to hear about some, I don't even know what the whole story is. It's like, don't they believe like like some some alien from like another galaxy is going to come save them or something? It's like completely yeah. fabricated science fiction stuff, right? It is. They, they believe in like this overlord called Xenu. But you, they don't, they don't tell the new recruits that you have to like work your way up the ladder. Yeah, and you have to pay for it. You have to pay for it, <laughs> and it's it's batshit crazy. But then again, so is everything that Diananda teaches. Once you're on the other side of it, yeah, but yeah, especially like once you've gone to the point where you're really devoted and you do become an Adinavasi, or you do like, you get to the point where, like, you've benefited from the meditations, you've benefited from the two day programs. And then you're like, I just want to give up everything. As soon as you get to that point and you do that, that's when you experience the dark side of it. Yeah. And you'll see the red flags. You will. And a lot of times people just ignore them because they do it in the, by justifying it with like feeling connection, feeling connection with the guru or because he's Paramashiva, he's allowed to do whatever he wants, which again, if you go look up what cult leaders do on the internet, that's literally like on every list is like the cult leader will not be accountable to the law and he will come up with some type of method to make it so he can get away with whatever he wants even if it's totally unjust like demoralizing 
uh, like rapey, just violent anything. They they figure out a way to make it so that they can do that, and it's totally okay with their yeah. devotees. Like this is a very this has happened time and time again. Yeah, like I I remember in the green room behind the stage for the Varanasi Inner Awakening program in October of 2015, there was a small group of us in, in Nityananda's green room. And it was Sri Maidananda, Manyanatma Swami, my yoga Swami, myself, and Amba, Sri Ambananda Swami. And so it was a very, very small group of like inner circle at that time, disciples. And Nitti was telling us about the relationship he had with his gurus when he was a kid. And at one point, he said, when he was 10 years old, Raghupati Yogi, who was like an elderly man, his yoga teacher, French kissed him. And he told us, like, he stuck his tongue in my mouth. And as soon as he did, I felt a romance with everything. And I must have made a face because he was like, ah, Surupa Priya. Don't listen to this with your dirty Western perverted logic because you think that was child abuse, but that wasn't. It was an initiation. And that moment, I felt guilty for thinking a 90 year old man sticking his tongue in a 10 year old kid's mouth was bad. So I felt like there was something wrong with me for for perceiving that as a disgusting yeah. journey. That's the other horrible side of it. It's like when he does do messed up stuff like that and say messed up stuff, it's always reversed back onto you. Like yeah. you are the demon. You're the one who's questioning Paramashiva. Like you should be punished. Christ yeah. did for you. And he and in that meeting, the reason I bring it up now is that that was the first time he told us that he wants to have his own island and run it like a nation state and create his own laws so that he can initiate his Gurukul kids the way his gurus had initiated him. And that was a big red flag for me. Like, wait, what? Like, he wants autonomy and impunity to the law so that he can French kiss a bunch of little kids? Like, that's wrong. But I talked it through yeah. with the other people who've been in the room, like Nyanatma, and said, hey, uh, is this okay? Like, how do you feel about what Swamiji just said back there? And she was like, oh, Ma, he's been talking about having his own island, his own nation forever. It will happen. He would never do anything to anybody unless it's for their highest growth. And That's so, always how it is. It's always for the highest growth. And so he can get away with anything, even if it's like raping you or like a, putting your hand on his dick multiple times in the case of Jordan. And yeah. Much worse for a lot of other people who are not going to come out to YouTube and say anything about it because they're afraid to like get character assassinated and like worse. Who knows what else they'll do? Especially like the 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 heavier the blow, the heavier the whistle blow, yeah. like the more they're going to come down on you. Yeah, you know, it, the more they're going to character assassinate you because they have to level out that whole entire thing now. Yeah. And I, I feel like when when Lenin Karupan went public, he said there are 30 to 40 other victims, men and women. And then it was two years later when Arti Rao revealed her identity publicly. Like she used a, a fake name in the case because she was scared of that attack. And then she had this major, I don't know how else to describe it, but courage is too small. Like she finally understood that if she uses a fake identity, people are going to say this isn't real. There was nobody here by that name. When she went public and revealed her face and, and told the world, my name is Arti Rao and he raped me, that was massive. And then they hit yeah. her with tons of lawsuits in American courts. They destroyed her through litigation and mm -hmm. Created a fake narrative. Nityananda told everyone that she had AIDS and that she would die soon. Like six different STDs and stuff like that. If you go watch that video where she's getting interviewed by the Indian media and where she like has the, the bag over her face and she takes it down and she says she's R.T. Rao and everything. Um, you can tell the sincerity of a being when they talk like that. That lady was not raped. She is a chaste Indian woman. And there's no way in hell she has six STDs. Like the type of person who would have six STDs does not have the type of body language and sincerity that R.T. Rao has. 
Exactly. Like that alone, just if you're an emotionally intelligent person, then you're going to be able to see that and pick up on the whole fabrication of it right away. Exactly. And I mean, that's why, like, so when she went public, they hit her with all of these lawsuits. Um, a girl falsely accused Lennon Karupan of rape. Uh, the journalist who brought them the court summons for Vinay Bharadwaj's rape case. Achala Swami accused him of rape. And their whole encounter yeah. filmed. She's yelling at him. She's pushing him out of the hall. They're, they're a gang attacking him, like a, a group of them. He didn't You're assault talking him. about the reporter guy that tried to serve him, right? Ajit. He literally takes out the paper and yeah. he, just, he tries to hand it. And he's yeah. literally like completely nonviolent about it. He takes like two steps forward and then everybody just swarms him. Yeah. He did not and do anything violent. He didn't do any he, type of rapey stuff. No. Nope. He didn't even want that job. Like if you no. watch the documentary, he didn't even want to get put up to that. I'm sure when he held up that paper, he's like, oh shit, no, I'm gonna have to go for it. And I'm like, good. of course, exactly yeah. what exactly what he thought was gonna happen happened. Yep. And then he got slapped with a false rape accusation. And that's that's a legal nightmare. And I mean, now I know, like, for me, when I went public, the only thing I knew was Nithyananda brainwashed me by telling me I was an incarnation of Davy and conned me into doing sexual favors for him. Thank God it only went as far as, like, a couple of hand jobs because if it had been worse than that, I'd probably be scarred for life. But, yeah, so he abused me sexually um he he mentally toyed with my identity and then i found out kids got beaten in his gurukul i had no idea how much worse his crimes were like tyler he is using some of the rudra kanyas as prostitutes for donated land girls who work minors joined his gurukul like it's so much worse than i knew it was when i first blew the whistle and i think the the unfortunate thing of the vice docuseries is when they show the ranjita sex tape they they blur her face and they don't tell her name and i don't think people in the world understand she's not just an actress who had sex with nityananda she is a now like his she's like his right hand person now i'm pretty sure is she not 100 percent. she she is the g lane maxwell to his epstein like she, I would go so far as to say she runs the cult with him, not even under his instruction. She's not even like him, then Ranjita, then everybody else. It's like him and Ranjita, then everybody else. What's interesting about that is like, I've had people who also like recently got out, they've hypothesized that like, she's actually responsible for jading him in a much worse direction than he was already headed. Yeah. And that, especially because, like, you know, men, like, we're, like, I'm throwing myself under the bus here, but we're a lot easier to control, especially with sex, than women are. Mm -hmm. So, like, there's hypotheses out there where it's like, okay, maybe actually Randita is the one that has all the power here, and he is kind of manipulated by her, or they go back and forth like that. It's 50-50, or it could be the other way. Who knows? Either way, yeah. what's happening is messed up. <laughs> Either it's 50-50 or she's slightly worse. And I say yeah. this as one of his abuse victims. Like he, yeah. I think he was um, a sexual predator from day one. Like he raped Vinay and Ardi and 30 to 40 people we don't know about. And minors, like I've heard the, the, the kids of his original inner circle, he molested them when they were 12 years old. And you they, heard this from them? I've heard this from a friend who spoke to one of those kids directly. So it's it's third hand information, but I really trust the source. And there's okay, a reason I feel I'm, you. I'm not naming which people's kids it was because I don't want to ruin their lives, but no, I no. think it would be wonderful if they would get the guts to just go public because yeah. I think that the reason Nikki has escaped his child porn charges, like from all the kids he made send nude selfies to him, um, he's evaded the the charges for molesting kids. Like he is 100% a pedophile. Um, I don't think even Lennon knew that when he said Nikki has abused men and women. 
Um, I don't think Arti knew that because she said he's abused women even older than her. I don't think they knew he was targeting kids back then. But what sucks is he gets away with it because those kids all come from Hindu families in India where they know their marriage prospects will be destroyed if this goes public. Their career prospects could be destroyed if this goes public. And there's a lot of shunning that goes on towards victims in places like that. It's like, how evil can you possibly be to say that you're an incarnation of Shiva and then that's how you treat your devotees, your yeah. child devotees? Yeah. Like, oh my God. And how sinister. Like, it's that type of stuff which makes it worth it for me to just be here and I know I'm going to have to deal with all the shit that comes from this video, but it's worth it to say this type of stuff because the world needs to be told. Like, yeah. and I know it, it eventually get like an avalanche because I know there's tons of people out there who have also experienced this stuff and they're just afraid to talk about it. But I mean, hey, if more people realize like there's nothing to lose, like no. you're you're not going to get destroyed, nothing is going to happen to you. That's truly that serious. You exactly. can talk about it. And in it, fact, it will I... amplify all this, and eventually that he will ha be held accountable. Exactly. And unlike a lot of his followers, I do believe in karma. Like Nitti would tell us, there's no such thing as karma. The universe doesn't have a CCTV camera. Your actions will never be used against you in the future. He says that so that people don't take action against abuse. Whereas but I- To make himself look like he's in the right, even though he's still doing all that messed up stuff. Exactly. He's making an excuse for himself. Yep. Trying to convince himself that he's not going to have to pay for his crimes. But I, I believe in karma. And I think that if you have been abused by a pedophile, by a rapist, by a human trafficker, by a labor trafficker, and you decide to go into hiding and never speak up against that abuse, that's some bad karma because you're just enabling yeah. him to abuse other people the way he abused you. So, yeah, yeah it, it's a heavy thing and it's not comfortable and it might be embarrassing. Like yesterday, my auntie and uncle told me that they watched my daughter join the cult and they didn't know how far the abuse had gone. And I caught myself cringing like, oh, shit, they saw me in the clips where I'm brainwashed saying stupid things. And they heard me talk about sending nude selfies to this fraud. Mm -hmm. I get it. I know why people are embarrassed because it's embarrassing. But it's worth a little bit of humiliation to save somebody else from being sexually assaulted. And, and sometimes you won't even get humiliated. Like recently, I told my dad too, and he was originally like the one who was like making fun of me for trying to go to Inner Awakening and being like, I remember telling him, look, I'm going to be gone to India. I'm going to be gone. And he's like, I'll see you in five days when the program starts and you're still here. Like, that was his mentality. And I recently told him, like, hey, like, I realize, like, this is actually a super dark cult. And, like, you were right. And he was actually, like, super nice about it. He was like, I'm just glad that you're safe now and that you're out. And there was no humiliation. So you never know how people are going to react. Like, a lot of times, especially if it's your parents, they're going to react in a space where they're just glad that you're safe. Yeah. That's so true. And I mean, all the relatives who I've said, you were right, I was wrong, they've had the same reaction. Like, wow, I'm so glad you realized that. They'll even say, wow, that's big of you to admit. And I think mm -hmm. the way Nitti boosts a person's spiritual ego, he makes people afraid to admit they were wrong because he's convinced them you're a superhuman and you don't make mistakes and you have no... You know, nobody else has power over you and have your swa on your car. You're a higher species than the entire rest of the world. Yeah. Like, that's that's another thing, too. Like, the, the whole us against them mentality that's created, that's another tactic. Like, mm -hmm. per, per, verbatim, verbatim, whatever that saying is, yeah. um, it's an exact, like, so many cults have done that. So many cult leaders have implemented that tactic. Mm -hmm. Like, nothing new you can go and research it yeah in fact tyler like you sent me the list 
of common characteristics and cult leaders. I'm thinking we can even just read through that list. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go through that right now. So that way we can just like literally every single bullet point. Yeah. It checks so off. I've, I've got it right here. How does a cult leader act? First point. The group is focused on a living leader to whom members seem to display excessively zealous, unquestioning commitment. Yep. I mean, do we even have to elaborate? It's it all speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. You weren't allowed to ask questions. I remember when when Nitti, and this is an example I've given a billion times, but when he asked me to have a threesome and told me pick another woman, tell him who I like, I told him I'm not I'm not gay, I'm not bi, I'm not attracted to any other women. And he kept pushing it. And I finally said, Well, you told me that I'm Shakti and you're Shiva, why would Shiva need another body if he has his goddess incarnated? Why would he need why would he need a human woman if he is Shiva? I got so punished for asking that question, Tyler. Like that's when he yeah, told me. I believe it. I mean like I remember seeing you like a even not even something that bad. I remember we were in the Ananda Sabha and you would come back from the Leeds meetings where you guys were all like talking and sharing what you did for the day and you would come back and just like on the verge of tears. Like I just got fucking destroyed. Yeah. Like I remember, I remember seeing your face. Yeah. Like, it, it was a very sincere thing. It's like you, like everybody has this idea because of like the, the lies the song has made up about you that you're some type of implant or that you were not sincere while you were there but like i was on the social media team with you for at least four months and i yeah. saw you at least 12 hours a day every single day you were sincere you were wholeheartedly doing what you believed was going to lead you to enlightenment yeah like there's there's no way you would have to be worse than some type of psychopath to be able to fake those type of emotions of emotions so good like yeah. there's no way i i mean an implant wouldn't survive the sleep deprivation like no. It, there's no way i i don't understand how anybody can even believe that because an implant wouldn't have gotten the trishul thing tattooed on their hand like yeah. you don't there's certain lines you don't cross if you're undercover that yeah, but yeah, definitely. like that, and like in order to actually, like, you were a lead, you were a social media lead, yes. and all of those people, whether they're doing corrupt things or not, all of those leads are highly intellectual, intelligent, very emotionally intelligent. Like they pick up on things. You, you're not gonna be able. They're gonna the slightest incompletion they can see in you. They would see right through you if you were an implant. Exactly. And I mean, the people in the cult who believed Maha Yoga was a, a great yogini and clairvoyant, she she was my best friend. She called me her twin. So either she never really had powers if I was an implant or I wasn't an implant. And that's why she and I got along so well. So it's, it's yeah, it, it's mind boggling to me that people believe their their slander and their defamation. Yeah. Anyway. Point number two, the group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. Calling calls for 12 hours a day much? I know. Like, why did social Locked media... in the Rajsabha with no air conditioning? Pausing calls, Everybody yeah. please make calls. Oh, my God. How many times have you heard that? Fuck us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shri Amrita. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the group, the group was preoccupied with bringing in new members. I think the reason I got so heavily love bombed by Nitti when I first joined was that he saw my YouTube channel as dollar signs. Like this is a great way to recruit new mm -hmm. members. Uh, this is why he wanted us to make three videos a day, every day, go live on Facebook. I mean, well, we he told you you should be able to get 10,000 people to come to every IA or something like that. One fifth of your YouTube subscribers. Yeah. Like, that's such a ridiculously impossible expectation. I know. Especially considered, even if people are sincere, considering the state of the world, it's yeah. to get 10,000 seekers who are willing to go out of their way to do that in the first place is like a yeah. monumental task, even if you had like five years to do it. Yeah. Like, to pay $15,000. Every month, and it's crazy. That is, uh, 
get the plane tickets, take the time off work, have somebody take care of their kids if they have kids. It's not easy, no. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember when the Kumba Mela program happened in Ujjain, it was a free program for people who stayed in the dorms or a $4,000 program for those of you who, mm. who paid the money to get your air-conditioned rooms. And I remember... It broke after one day, oh my by God. the way. It broke after one freaking day, and we paid that four grand for literally nothing. Yeah. I mean, you still had a and little... No, there was no Wi-Fi either, that too. Sorry. Oh, we, were, we paid for Wi-Fi, literally. My friend, who was a doctor that went there, I remember him yelling at the sannyasi at the registration desk, being like, I'm literally a doctor. I have to talk to my clients. I could get sued if you do not let me use the Wi-Fi. And they're just like, nope, this is for sannyasis only. Like, he was having such a rough time with that. Uh, nobody cared. Nobody cared about anybody else except for the guru and the guru bhak, you know? Yeah. And it's honestly, it's I don't want to throw anybody under the bus who actually did that. Like, the sannyasi who told him, like, no, I can't do that. Because it's literally, like, you can't unless you want to get destroyed by everybody else. Like, you can't go against anything the Sangha says, especially when you're in Kavi. Otherwise, it's like, they could very well just be like, okay, drop Kavi, leave, go out to the Kumbh Mela, you have no money. Like, you have no idea where you are, you don't, you don't have cell signal, it's like, you fend for yourself. It's like, Even that's worse than that. so much to be able to handle for yeah. some people. Like, I, I know what it feels like to be able to go through that circumstance and, and still, like, have the money for it and do everything for the first time. And yeah. it is really hard. You can't just like a third eye your way through life, especially then when you're like going through all this emotional turmoil. Mm -hmm. like, of course, people are just going to do what they're told. It's yeah. not their fault, though. No, they'd be put into prayas chita. And yeah. everyone in the cult, like you hear the words prayas chita and it's like, ooh, like you'll you'll recoil in yeah. feet. Because that's... Or if you're Pranapriya, laugh at the person who's getting it. Yeah, Pranapriya will name who she wants to get it and beat the shit out of them now. Like, they, they've escalated the level of physical violence and bidity. I think... I don't think either of us ever saw anybody get beaten the way Jordan did. I've seen, like, a lot of intense verbal abuse, especially because when you went to Canada and I had the social media lead for, like, however long you were gone, I think it was like three weeks. That was like the scariest three weeks of my entire time there. Um, because I had to go to all of the courtyard meetings with Nityananda and all of the other leads. And they're all like, he's like ripping them apart. And they're all ripping each other apart. And I'm like behind the pillar. Like I literally didn't get anything done. I've never actually spoken words to Nityananda before. And the first thing he's ever going to say to me is that I'm a piece of shit and I haven't gotten anything done. And I'm just sitting there like, petrified for like an hour and a half really having the pee <laughs> which made it even worse and yeah. um luckily i think that he saw like i'm just not gonna mess with you like obviously you're cowering in fear right now like yeah what's the point in me just like ripping you apart so much more like you already have it bad enough yeah and okay. he is so yeah bad. he like what what genuinely enlightened being or god wants people to be scared of them like Seriously. if you're shiva and you've shed tears of compassion for humanity that sprout into the rudraksha trees that bless the world would you come down as an avatar ready to give people enlightenment and laugh at their suffering like and the scream at them and scream and have at sex them? behind their back yeah tell them their that kids you're and everything long. else that he does yeah why do you think he tells people have 10 kids and send them to Gurukul? He's creating like a self-perpetuating system of people he can sexually exploit. It's and really... It's also trying to make himself look credible too, because if the more people he can get to actually have 10 kids, which is absurd anyways, like how long did that take? Like, I guess like it could be done in 10 years, but like you're going to have, I bet you you'd have be having issues with your body by that point. Yeah, not without massive health um, problems. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I think he's just trying to make himself look credible just because if someone actually did that, it's like that one unsuspecting person who's seeking enlightenment is going to be like, wow, like that sincere person was, he must be really enlightened if they gave him 10 of 
their kids for the Guru Call. I want my kids to go to the Guru Call too, not having any idea what's really going on. No. Like, that's a plan. He knows that. He knows they that. They all know it. Yep. It's crazy. I mean, the next point, the group is preoccupied with making money. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, questioning, doubt, and dissent are discouraged or even punished. Yeah, we've discussed that. Remember, he would even say, like, um, he would say on stage during satsang, everyone can have vakyarta sadas, questioning is good, discussion is good, debate the sacred talk. As long talk, as you don't question him. As long as you don't question him, exactly. You can question each other, you should question each other, but never question the guru bhakti. Yeah. This is a good one, Tyler. When I read this one, I thought, whoa, yep. Yeah. Mind numbing techniques such as meditation, chanting, speaking in tongues, denunciation sessions, debilitating work routines are used to suppress doubts about the group and its leaders. So I will say, as kind of like a, I don't know, I love meditating and chanting in Sanskrit, and I still do those things. Damn. I don't find them to be mind numbing. I find them to be empowering. However, um, as a caveat, chanting Om Nityananda Paramashivam like for twelve hours a day, and that's basically saying I am Nityananda. I am in Nityananda. I am Nityananda. I just want to be in oneness with Nityananda. I'll do whatever Nityananda says. I'll give my entire life to him. I'll give all of my kids to him. Like it just goes into that type of thing. I think that's what that statement means. Is like mind numbing, is and it gets you on a very like one track my thought current towards the person who's running the cult to give them everything that they're trying to exploit you to. Exactly. And the other thing is meditating really does put your brain into a receptive state. So if you uh -huh. meditate before somebody gives you a discourse, you're more likely to believe what they tell you, whether it's credible yeah. information or not. And so when meditation is used in day-to-day -day life to get into a receptive state, to get into a creative zone, maybe before writing or drawing or painting or singing, that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you're being forced to meditate before your guru gives you an instruction, that sets you up for unquestioning obedience. And that's where he that and I do want to say too, um, just for the sake of like covering this ground, and for the sake of just the argument or the debate that could come up against us, um, we're both well aware that, like, on the outskirts of the Sangha, there are, like, Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita reading class. You go, you attend that, you get into a meditative, meditative space, you leave, and you go benefit your life from it. This is yeah. not the type of stuff that we're talking about. On the surface level, there's so much information that you that is genuine Hindu scriptural yeah. information that you can benefit your life from. So don't compare that type of stuff and the entry level stuff to yeah. the deeper level of it when you're more, you're more surrendered into it and you start not being able to question yourself, your surroundings, um, you lose your critical thinking, all of that type of stuff. Absolutely. And thank you for that little disclaimer because we wouldn't have joined the cult if there weren't some beneficial teachings. Like, I yeah. really thoroughly enjoyed the Nitya Dhyan meditation. I really enjoyed listening to the Upanishad discourses and the Shiva Sutras. I love sacred Vedic scriptures. And I can yeah. see they are beneficial to life if they're applied in their pure form. Where they become detrimental to life is when, for example, like, Niti would describe Sampurti and Shraddha and Upayanam and Apyayanam. Those are great Sanskrit principles, like being integrated, meaning what you say, following through with your promises. That's very, very good stuff. But you become an insider and it's not integrity to your inner space or authenticity in your self-expression. It's integrity to the guru, authenticity to the guru responsibility to do what he tells you to do it's nothing to do well, with even what the administration tells you what to do at that point because they're going to yell at you too yeah yeah it, it's basically giving away your sovereignty to him yeah. and his goons him ranjita pranapriya achala nyanatma, nyanatma. 
Snehamayi Mukta, Muktika, the Shiva Gnanas, anybody in his admin team. And if you guys, anybody who's watching this video, if you guys haven't seen Laney's interview with Dara, go watch that and see her experience with the Anatma and everybody else living with them in Ecuador because it's scary as fuck. Mm -hmm. And she's not lying. No. Go watch it. And what she shares is one one hundredth of what some of the other people there experience. Yeah. Um, and, and thank you for that. Yeah, that's the other thing, Tyler. People will say, you know, whoever is speaking out against him was an implant and they were never integrated. People who saw Lainey work, they know she worked hard. Like, I remember yeah. you mentioning some people have said, well, until somebody like Dritta leaves or like Maha Yoga leaves, I'm not leaving. Lainey worked harder than Dritta. And was more committed than Maha Yoga. She she was in that's also like like three it's years. So hard to be in that position too, because a lot of the the sincere brahmacharis and brahmacharinis, they're the ones that get the grunt work and the shit work to where they never get recognized. They never get up and get closer to Nityananda. They just yeah. get like the complete like they're slaves. Like they just exactly. are in have so much of a workload, and the administration is just sitting there watching them do more. Your word for this work is more work. And they're like, I literally can't do anymore. Like, is this not good enough? Like, my heart space is there. Doesn't that matter? No, nope, more work. No. Nope. And like you said, the reward for a job well done is a bigger responsibility. The, the reward for good work is more work. There's no vacation. Yeah. There's no pat on the back with a thank you. There's only, why only this? I told you. Make I remember. Three. Why did you only do two? Yeah. I, I mean, from my personal experience, I remember, like, that was right around the time when I just, like, gave up as a sannyasi and everything and started, like, running away from you because I was scared of whatever you are going to tell me as the integrated lead that you were. Yeah. Like, that's another thing. Like, why would you be an implant? Like, I literally ran away from you because I was scared to get blasted by you. Like, you would not do that if you were an implant. No. And also, like... I know I've seen that side of you. I've seen the integrated Swarupa Priya, and I have talked to Sarah Landry, and you have, like, such an open heart, and you're such a nice person. Like, we were laughing super loud before we started making this. Like, there, you really feel like you're so much of a kind-hearted person now that you're back to just being Sarah Landry than when you were Swarupa Priya. It's true. And you know why that is? Like, I think it was before you ever joined the cult, Tyler. There was a day when I saw Nitti hardcore blast Sri Yoga Swami and a guy, um, Premaya Swami, not the Premaya you would have, but his predecessor. And Nitti was like, he called me to his courtyard. It was before we traveled to Thailand to pick the, the venue for Nitti Anandoham. And he just tore into these two guys. I think Maya yeah. this me also, the, the three of them. And like was ripping them apart. And back then I was still in my honeymoon phase. So Nitti was being really super sweet to me. So I actually yeah. had the guts to say, Swamiji, why are you yelling at them like this? Don't you know? <laughs> this is how stupid I was in my early days. Yeah. Don't you know that psychologists say it's easier to motivate people through positive reinforcement than negative reinforcement you're just you're just making them scared of you and yeah. holy like <laughs> what not to <laughs> the psychopath narcissist yeah that's that's you hit the nail on the head with that one but it's my true. god so he started trolling me from that day on anytime he blasted somebody he'd say sorry Swarupa Priya and and then he really he would actually do that yes he actually did that, yeah. For like, yeah, for the first time uh, when he blasted Niramaya, when he blasted Chidrupa, he used to fat shame her and make fun of her weight, and I spoke up, and he, he would, like... I think I remember that. I feel like I witnessed that one time. I think everybody it, did. It was multiple people, though. Like, he would call people out in the courtyard and be like, you're way too fat. Like, why are you being like this? 
Yes. It's like what not to say to a person who's like struggling with their inner worth because of their weight. It's like, why the hell would you say that to them? But that person needs to be told that like they're a divine being and that they're beyond their body and to love every curve of their body because every molecule of them is divine. Positive reinforcement. Positive. Not being like your fat change. Yeah. Asshole. How can you be yeah. Parma Shiva if you're fat? How can you be Parma Shiva if you're fat? Wrong. You made her body, didn't you? You claim you're Shiva, so you create... Why did you make her fat if you don't like seeing her fat? But, exactly. So, Tyler, so we get back from the program. Mm -hmm. I My full training started in Thailand during that Nithya Nandoham program because Sneha Mai had it out for me. She treated me like shit. She convinced Nithi to send me to the kitchen to work with her. Then he started blasting me. So when we came back for that program, I was leveled. And we had a, a campfire session. It was like right before the Ujjain Kumbh Mela, maybe the week before. Mm -hmm. And we went to sit with Nithi in Sacred Arts. And in the middle of the whole thing, he starts blasting Niramaya, who was like the head of the accounts team. And I must have been making a face because in front of the whole gathered group of Adi Navasis, he said, Swarupa Priya is carrying the stupid Canadian politeness pattern. And I've indulged her and I've laughed about it, but she needs to know that that will keep her from enlightenment. And then he looked at me and said, Ma, you have to drop your stupid niceness and your stupid politeness and be ferocious. And he, he and started... And that's where it started? That's where it started. And he told me... Yeah. If one of your team members doesn't accomplish something, don't be gentle, be ferocious, yell at them, blast them, force them to do it, get the work done. That is you holding the space for their enlightenment. If He told me, if I don't yell at people, I'm holding them back. So he created this whole false persona where I looked back over my entire life where I always valued friendliness, positive reinforcement, treating people the way I want to be treated. And suddenly there's this mind fuckery done where I think mm -hmm. if I'm treating them nicely, I'm doing them a disservice. And so by the time he made me a social media lead, which was a few months later, like, I guess like six months after Kumbh Mela, by the time you joined, I was full on living his Anyakara of me which is the ferocious lead team lead um and i never took it as far as other team leads did like i think no, i was no, on the media team compared I mean, to there was there was times for sure like some of the most messed up stuff that i feel like you were told to do is like remember when um we had to stop people from coming in to see satsang yeah if they didn't make a YouTube video. Yeah. And people would be like at the door or like you'd be like literally at the door and it's like you're one second late and somebody's like, no setting for you and closes the door on your face. With you and it's like, come on. If yeah. you're trying to get enlightened, compassion. Exactly. Seriously. Like. He had no compassion. Um, I also just want to say, like, kind of going full circle and, like, going back to what I was saying about, like, what actually, like, made me leave and, like, the, the, um, like, the reward for doing a good job is more work. I remember at the end of it, like, when we were approaching Mahasaya Shiboham and literally nothing was done. They were expecting all these protein, pro, protein program <laughs> participants. Um, we're told that there's going to be a huge elaborate building. They're going to be having darshan and, and stuff like that. And literally just dirt. There's there's nothing there. And this was like a month and a half before the program started. And I'm just sitting there like, shit is going to hit the fan soon. Like we're, our workload is about to get insane and we're going to get screamed at and we're not going to have any sleep and everything else. And that was at the same point where like, I feel like it was like, maybe, I don't think it was your idea, but I think you were there. And I think it was like Yanatma and Pranapriya or somebody like that who was like, oh no, it's, you told me, but it was because Pranapriya and the other leads told you that you had, we each had to nominate somebody from your own team to do a special project that's like super huge for Mahasada Shivoham. And you chose me because <laughs> like, it was just me, you, Guru Swatika, who is like, of course, like 
she's an integrated person and a lovely person as it is, but it's like, she's an old person. Like they're not as savvy with technology and it'd be hard for her. And then Loka Carta, who couldn't even speak English. So oh, right, I, forgot I, was like the on- yeah. I was like the only good choice for you, basically. And I was basically, I, I just knew from that point, that's the point where I started running away from you. And when I stopped like coming to morning routine, when I stopped doing everything, I was like, this is the straw that broke the camel's back. Like I can, I'm, I can't even handle staying in a sane state of mind because I'm going on like two hours of sleep all the time. Like that organization is not really my strong suit. It's not something that I ever went to school for. It's something that I still need to learn to be a lot more integrated to. So when that was thrown on me and they were like, you have to be the leader, you have to like come up with a project and integrate it all within this short time period. I was like, nope, can't do it. Yeah. Like it's just unreasonable though. Like it's, it's un it's so unfair to like give somebody like two hours of sleep for months at a time and then give and they're already doing an absurd amount of work and then you get hit with a project that's already like freaking three months late and there there's people who have paid like 12 grand who are expecting this this thing to be amazing yeah so and they, i know like it, they're oh. hyped up and you're responsible for making that happen it's, yeah. it's way too much and as far as leadership skills go, like I drop, like I, I did two years of art school and I didn't go back for the third year because I lost my faith in the system. That's my back. That's my training. I'm not equipped to be a team lead, to think like a CEO and bring. Yeah, 10, me either. I, was, I went to guitar building school. Like I haven't done anything like that. No. So it's, it's crazy. He, he puts that kind of pressure on underqualified people. And then makes it feel like we're makes us feel like failures when we're not able to live up to his grandiose, impossible expectations. Yeah. And, you know, like we've come to the conclusion, some of us who talk that he didn't Mm -hmm. want us to live up to his guru vak. He wanted us to fail so that we would be constantly groveling at his feet, begging him for completion, feeling indebted to him feeling like we failed on a smaller scale that's even something that like if you've ever had a narcissistic manager at work they'll do this thing where they'll never hire anybody who's smarter than them because the moment somebody challenges their beliefs they it hits their ego so hard that they just fire that person they need to be around people who support them as like the all-powerful god that's otherwise like their ego they just can't handle it it's too devastating of a blow to their ego ego exactly like I remember explaining to Pranapriya, it was her idea that we all have to do three YouTube videos a day. And Nithi would go along with whatever idea she came up with because he was love bombing her at that time. And yeah. I spoke up and said, actually, as per the YouTube algorithm, more than one YouTube video a week and people feel like they're being spammed, they'll mute your notifications, they'll stop watching, you'll lose subscribers. Get they get annoyed. And I remember she got so mad at me for knowing about the algorithm and having information that contradicted her instruction that she said, keep that up and it'll be 10 videos a day. So it's like, they don't care. Oh. They don't care about our views. No, like this is, or this our is something I've discussed. Oh, sorry, continue I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't no, mean to cut like you off. They, they want us to be exhausted, overworked, demoralized, and feel stupid. And you got out at a good time because during Mahasada Shivoham, we did have to do 10 videos a day, Tyler. It got, he, I believe it. he kicked me out. He said, you're not handling your social media team with the ferociousness I want. And he made Ma Pranapriya the social media team head. Okay. That's when shit got real. Like, you want to see mm-hmm. black teams? You want to see, like, run away from your team lead? Like, I've sh- heard. I've heard. <laughs> it's scary. It's like PTSD if I think back to that time. Like, Ranjita blasting yeah. me, Pranapriya blasting me, Nitti himself blasting. Oof. It's torture. About the love bombing, too. I have to say, like, I've also experienced that. Because remember, like, um, when I first like had enough and I was like, okay, I'm just going to go drop coffee. And I was literally, um, I had changed into my regular clothes and I walked out with my co- my coffee. And then you're waiting for me at the dorm, so just talking to me. And I'm just like a sobbing mess, just like completely emotionally numb. 
yeah. you convinced me to stay because you said that Swamiji or Nityananda sent you. He did. To bring I, me back. Guard. Somebody reported so, to I feel him. like he. Yeah. I feel like he never even acknowledged my existence until I said I was going to leave, though. Until you were. Thing. He was losing you. And I then after that, after getting blasted by Anatma after that circumstance, too, for doing Sangha Droha and saying how hard it was there, because then two people who were doing IA were like, well, Parantapa said that this is really hard, so why would we want to do that? He's, he's, we can tell he's really sincere. I know he's not going to lie. And then, of course, like, I got my ass shoot out, like, right, and you witnessed that. And I'm yeah. just sitting there, like, in the Raj Sabo, like, having nothing to say because I'm so numb. But after that, um, after that, uh, Nityananda did, like, a week solid of, like, every single day he would do male body brahmacharya meetings. That's right. And, like, personal time, love bombing. Like, he, like, I remember, like, everything went silent after I had asked him a question about gender identity. And okay. he was just, everything was silent. I, like, kind of was getting a little bit aloof because I was tired. And okay. he looks at me and he's like, Prantipa, you wanted a hug? Come have it. And, like, he gives me a hug in front of everybody. And everybody's like, oh, you're so lucky. Look how beautiful this is. So it's, like, yeah. the whole, like, the conditioning of like you can't leave me i love you but i'll exactly. only love you when and get you this close when you're trying to leave that's right and that's what would happen every time i ran away he love bombed me called me back and then it got worse once he knew he had me yeah. and i remember when he did that to you tyler i remember there there was a leads meeting in the courtyard and he said Swarupa Priya, if tyler leaves you've lost your connection with me he didn't say Tyler, he said if Parantapa leaves, you're his yeah. team lead, you brought him here with your videos, it's your responsibility to help him hold the space, hold the frequency, hold the Guru Vak. If he leaves, I don't think he threatened me with Prayas Chita, but I, it was like that. He's like, if he leaves, you've lost your connection too. It's like, a, I think I remember you saying, I think you remember saying it was like a life and death thing, like yeah. directly to me. Like if you leave, um, I'm dead, like that, that. Yeah. It would have been like I would have been kicked to some branch audience where people do die. Like a lady died of a snake yeah. bite this year because Nitti wouldn't give the approval for the gas money to drive her to the hospital to cure her from the snake. That. That's how he treats people in Prayas Chita. So it is a life or death thing. That's not even an exaggeration. And I think people, yeah. people in the like extended Sangha who were like, well, okay, so maybe behind the scenes he rapes kids and, you know, kills people like Sangeeta, but I still benefit from satsang, so I'm going to keep watching. They don't understand. We're not exaggerating. No. It's honestly worse. Like, you can't... It's something that you have to be there to experience. Like, a words don't really do it justice. And the worst part about it is, like, when we were all going through... When me and you were going through this, we were, like so conditioned to just accept it like yeah. that's such a red flag and it's so messed up but we're still just like completely integrated yeah. like, i just want to love swamiji i just want to get enlightenment from swamiji it's like that experience like when i was in the courtyard and i got a hug that was like i felt so good from that yeah. circumstance like i remember like how divine that seemed in the moment yeah. that also just seeing that and seeing how he would manipulate me like that just yeah. makes me want to say everything I possibly can to be like hey you're the one who's out of integrity here exactly yeah. like you're talking about responsibility how about some responsibilism right and how about p giving people the freedom to go come and go as they please why make somebody yeah. think they're going to die if they leave the gates why why manipulate people to stay with you? If you're a real enlightened avatar of Shiva, people are going to be flocking to you and they'll stick to you like honey because of how great you are. They're not going to be like fleeing because yeah. he's like a garbage fire. Like he's, he treats people like shit. He really does. I have an ironic story to tell you. I can't say it during this video just because it's oh. confidential for the person that told me, but about the the garbage smelling shit i have a really funny story to tell okay. you so remind me of that after we're done filming we're done filming okay then i'll i'll move to the next thing yeah i felt like there was still more oh yeah okay 
So chanting, speaking in tongues. Okay, that's a fucking Christian thing. And for the record, yeah. I'm not a Christian. I don't work for the Catholic Church. I didn't write a book about Catholicism. I wrote a book, and the reason I'm saying this, Tyler, is they're attacking me these last few days, claiming that I'm a cult leader and stuff. Claiming that I'm a cult leader for the Catholic Church. So they're saying I wrote a book about Catholicism. No, I wrote a book called Free Yourself from the International Conspiracy Against Enlightenment. And it was a book saying, don't be addicted to television. Don't eat GMO foods. If you can buy organic, buy organic. Go vegan. Don't believe everything. Detoxify that you your pineal gland. Yeah. All that de- type of stuff, right? Calcify the pineal gland. Meditate. Do yoga. Be physically active. Um, don't just be a consumer. Be a creator. Like, do something that you feel inspired by creatively whether it's writing or drawing or playing a sport just do something that's not just buying stuff so that's the book i it was called free yourself from the international conspiracy against enlightenment at that time there was a fake catholic bishop trying to con me into leading his organization and he wrote this like manifesto about catholicism that he insisted I tack on at the end of that book. And when I said no, he sent me screenshots of a private message he had sent to Nityananda saying, I wrote this and I want your disciple, Manitya Sudevi, to put it at the end of her book. Please give me blessings for this. And Nitya wrote, black, wrote back blessings. That's why I... Well, of course you're going to do it at that point. Yeah. Of course. First, because Ma Nitya Sudevi was surrendered to Nityananda, and if he gives this crazy ass fake bishop blessings to put some Catholic psycho babble tacked onto the end of my book, if I think that's my guru's will, I'll do it. So, in fact, if anybody from his cult was responsible for that Catholic book being included in my book, it was Nityananda himself. And the reason they're using that to attack me is that they all knew that it happened. Because it was Niti who instructed Maniti Vibhuti, who was then the Mahunt of Slovakia, and me to go to Ralph in Germany to, quote, make him part of Sangha. So Niti sent us to him. We didn't do that, like, behind Sangha's back or secretly or privately. That was instruction. And so all the pictures of me where I'm there with this fake bishop who had a creepy thing about feet, so he always wanted to be sitting at our feet. That's not me being a cult leader trying to, like, start something. That's me following Swamiji's instruction, and then that guy taking a bunch of photos and putting them on his website. That wasn't my decision. That was Nitti's instruction. I went along with it up until the time that that guy said he wanted to teach the world Jesus yoga, and then I was like... Fuck this. Even if Swamiji tells me that I'm done, I'm out, I left. I went to the IA in Varanasi in 2015. I told Nitti all about all of that. Like, this is why I left that. It felt wrong. Don't send anybody else there to work with him, even if he tells you. Like, I think the reason Nitti supported that fake bishop is that the fake bishop wrote a big opinion piece claimed it was from the POV of the Catholic Church. And it was all about why even though the Pita Dishwari of Madurai Adinam told Nitti that he was stripped of the title of 293rd, he posted a photo of Nitti getting coronated, the 293rd Guru Mahasanidanam. And that fake bishop said, once an initiation is given, it can never be withdrawn. So even if he initiates a 294th, Nityananda will always be the 293rd because there was a public coronation. So because he was like praising Niti in a time when Niti felt attacked by the people in Tamil Nadu, Niti blessed anything. It was like an happened. alliance you wanted to build. It's like an alliance of narcissists. Like I'm a fake bishop, but that Indian guru makes me feel like a real bishop. And Nithi's like, I'm an imposter who got kicked out of Madurai Adinam, but that Catholic bishop thinks I'm the real thing. So they were like feeding off of each other's spiritual. Oh my God. It's crazy. And so it's just ridiculous to see his disciples showing my book, like free yourself, 
and saying that this is a Catholic book. It's not. Yes, there was yeah. Catholic stuff at the end, but I didn't write that part. And I didn't want to. I think the issue is like when people see that type of stuff, like the Sangha has literally created web pages where they just fabric, they put those pictures of you where you're looking like Davy and everything and you have Hanukkahs at your feet and everything. They put that and they fabricate the whole damn story. And you know it's the Sangha because the website looks like shit. And it has like a maroon background with orange letters on it. It's like, okay, who made this? I wonder. (laughs) Like, (laughs) Literally the Audinum colors the guru vox colors yeah and and here's the other thing tyler if i was trying to start my own cult would i make videos about what how to recognize the actions of a cult leader and how not to join a cult like fuck no right no i'd be i'd be like hilarious like it's they should be embarrassed yes because their claims are getting so freaking ridiculous at this point and like Man, I feel like they're all going to hate me so much after this video. But you know what, you guys? Like, you need to face reality a little bit. And just look in the mirror and just look at all this information without immediately shutting it down because you're afraid to be a demon. Actually take it in and who knows? Like, you might end up completely being a more free person than you are now. Exactly. Exactly. So all of that (laughs) was because the next thing on the list was uh, speaking in tongues, which is a Christian thing. But you know how... I don't even know what it it means to speak in tongues. I've never, like, seen somebody speak in tongues. Also, this is different than channeling. We should say that. It's different than channeling in that it's not translated into a language understood by the channeler or the person listening to the channeler. Speaking in tongues is something that they do in like charismatic Christianity or I forget the name of that sect, but like Baptist, but really extreme where people, they they imagine themselves to be filled with the Holy Spirit and then they just start babbling gibberish and they call that speaking in tongues. Like the spirit is moving them to just make noise. Nitti would make us speak in tongues. He made us do that. Only instead of saying we were filled with the Holy Spirit, this happened like in 2015 when I first joined. He would have brahmacharinis and sannyasinis in one hall, brahmacharis and sannyasis in the other. They would play this super disturbing full volume music of like jungle animals in heat. Oh, yeah, yup. Yep. You we, I had the I did that I didn't do I never did IA I only did the Kumela and I was only at Adi Navasi but yeah. um right after um Nityananda did those Brahmacharya meetings where he was doing like the love bombing tactic to me um one of the things he was talking about gender identity yeah. and trying to get us all complete in that aspect and uh so after that one of those meetings they brought us into the Rajasabha and um they played that freaking loud ass jungle music and it's just like a bunch of monkeys and elephants it just sounds like a clusterfuck of animals just like it's so annoying and loud and crazy but i know what you're talking about and and it's the sounds of like hunter animals killing prey animals and like animals having sex with each other and he would tell us to visualize yourself entering the body of an animal from one of your previous lifetimes visualizing yourself going through that Visualize it, whatever right? you hear, visualize that happening in your body as whatever animal pops into your mind. And I remember being yeah. so fucking scared the first time I went into one of these with the brahmacharinis when I was new in 2015. Like, yeah. what the fuck did I just get myself into? These people are nuts. I, everybody, even like as Adinavasis, all these people like Porna Sanyasis, everybody else, they're all like when the music starts, everybody just like kind of looks around and they're like, okay, I gotta wait for somebody else to start doing it first because I'm oh. not being the first person to do this shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, in, in my group, when everybody's we... so self conscious about how weird it is. Well, yeah, because it's fucking weird. So when we used to have to do that, everyone had to be blindfolded and in a pitch black hall at 11 p.m. Mm-hmm. So we would do that for one hour before going to bed. And that is super messed yeah, up. Yeah, that's, that's how I did it too. Yeah. yeah. 
So speaking in tongues, yeah, we did that. We just did it from a different context. It was even scarier. It was like be an animal and make animal noises. So there were people like growling, screaming, grunting, like crazy sounds. I remember literally like this is pretty graphic, but I literally remember like he told me to visualize myself as a tiger. So I remember visualizing myself as a female tiger because he's like, be integrated to your gender identity. And that's what I told him. I was, I, I've always felt like a lesbian in a male body. Like I've always felt like my inner energy is feminine, even though I'm in a male body. So he's like, okay, be a tiger because tigers are more feminine. And I remember like the whole entire time, I was just like visualizing myself and actually making noises and doing the movements of feeling like a female tiger having sex with a male tiger. Yes. And he, that, that was going to burn like, past life karma for me. Yeah, he, like, told, us, he told us to do that. Like, he, yeah, I remember one of my friends. Oh, who was it? One of my friends who dropped coffee like even way back then and left i honestly don't remember who but told us that when he first introduced that to the male bodies he said you should have a sexual release in this and it'll cure you from ever having a wet dream and so there were guys yeah, he said a bunch of weird shit about that Creepy. Like he told us too that if unless you have sex um your your semen won't uh or like if you don't have sex and you just masturbate it's just protein so you won't lose your vital energy which like if you get into Ayurveda or any other like life science in general, it's very clear that that is false information. Right. As a male, I can definitely say like you lose your life force energy. You feel tired afterwards. Yeah. And that was like, that was confusing for me too. Cause I was like, what the fuck? Like, am I doing something wrong? I'm still just trying to do everything right. And it seems like I can't do everything right. And now just, this is just like yeah. how my body is. This is why he slept all day every day, because he was just always, you know what I mean? He was constantly getting yeah, sexual favors. That makes sense. That makes sense now. That's why he was always asleep on his stupid swing. Especially if you're doing it, like, multiple times a day, too. Which he was. Like, yeah. Like, all, every day, too, like, I, without getting too graphic and everything, um... I can definitely say, and I'm sure like every other male is going to agree with me, like, you cannot do that without consequence. This is yeah. the reason why Drita was so integrated to NoFap and, like, took it upon himself to do that in the first place. That's right. I forgot it just, about that. Yeah. It, that. And I stayed away from that. Like, I know there was other people doing all that stuff when we were brahmacharis, but me, I was like super integrated. And it's like, I'm giving my heart and my life to Swamiji. And I stayed away from anything sexual. I did not do anything. I didn't masturbate, nothing. And I can tell, like, it does have a certain power to it. If you don't do that stuff and you withhold that energy, then certainly, like, I do remember feeling feelings like, wow, like, I feel like my body is really healthy from doing this. Or I feel like childlike again, in a sense, because like nobody does that stuff if you're a child, unless you have like, unless you're a very unfortunate soul. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. There's like a plethora of stuff like that where like he just tells you false information about the human body, and then everybody, because it's Guru Vak, they're like, oh my God, my body's different than that. Now I have to fix everything yeah. when there's nothing even wrong with you in the first place. And then you're just gaslighting yourself exactly. years without even realizing what the problem is. Yeah. The problem isn't your body. It's that he's telling you stupid information that isn't true. Yeah, exactly. And then making you feel it's your incompletion or your inauthenticity yeah. or your lack of integrity. Yeah. So even worse than speaking in tongues, denunciation sessions, the completion sessions, whenever he would have a group of people sit with a person who he deemed incomplete to help them dig out their incompletions. That's a that's like a public shaming session were you there tyler yeah, that's... go ahead uh when they had sundareshwara and nandita at the front of the hall and for like two days straight the adults had to be blindfolded and try to do blindfold reading and whoever didn't there they would have like say all the women on one side all the men on the other side manifest powers like read blindfolded Whoever could do it could go to the back of the hall and eat. 
and just hang out and be normal. Whoever couldn't had to sit with our teams. I remember Guru Swatika fell asleep standing during that completion session and like. Oh man, I don't know. Like see, like stuff like that happened so frequently that like I might have been there. It doesn't particularly spark my memory, okay. but like, like I've seen so much stuff like that that I'm like that's obviously like very believable at least from my standpoint. Yeah, I I just remember in these completion sessions, there there were times when nobody did anything wrong. But we would have to mass blast them until they admitted that they did something wrong. And then once they admitted that they did something wrong, then it was about, okay, how can we support you to be integrated to this new realization? Like completely. The funny thing is like a lot of times when people would have incompletions with the Sangha and like the way the administration is run and just how things ran in the audience in general, it was because they were like a very heart sensitive being and they just felt like this isn't right what's happening here and that was what their incompletion was and then they just get it blasted out of them like no ferociousness is how shiva is like you can't you can't be like that you have to be powerful but yeah. really like i feel like the real powerfulness is to be able to stand in front of somebody who's just like horrible to you mm -hmm. and still be able to like accept them and at least accept your own reality and be stable in the moment to where you can choose how to respond to, to that person and not end up gaslighting yourself, even if they're gaslighting you. And so that's very it's, hard to do. It's the opposite. Yeah, especially in that circumstance, like it's near impossible because you have a, you're circled with a group of people around you and you have surrendered your life. Yeah. And you can't, you can't just be like, no, I'm going to fight you guys on this. Like, yeah. I know that this is, this is my truth. You can't do that. They'll just be like, take a hike, like get lost. Or even in years. Go do prize. Like, Guru Droha punishment for you or whatever. Exactly. Let the world destroy you then. Yeah. He would say, find that. Obviously, you're going to be nothing when you go back to the world, anyways. Yeah, that's another thing he told me in that Brahmacharya meeting, like after I talked to him. Um, he told me that the whole entire thing that I'm going through is like me being on a boat. And the boat gently rocking back and forth, but me freaking out and jumping out the side and committing suicide. And he said that if I left, I'd be committing spiritual suicide. Yeah. And it, like for the life of me, I was like, I don't know what you're saying. And I, like, of course, like he was my guru. So I just tried to internalize it as much as possible. But, but it felt like a lot more than boat just rocking a little bit with some gentle waves. Definitely. Definitely. And that's how they make you stay, because then you're convinced that the world is going to be worse than the Audinum, but the world is so much better than the Audinum. <laughs> like, yeah. the worst bully boss I've ever had in my entire life, when I worked at a retail store with, like, really strict sales goals and pressure, yeah. was nothing compared to Pranapriya or Ranjita. Like, what, in fact, like, that lady was really, really nice compared to like the admins in that cult yeah at least you can get away from her too you could just like i mean i know you gotta pay bills but it's like you can still go get another job well you get to go home at the end of the day and you're not on call yeah. 27 where she's gonna say come to a10 and you know you're in for another blasting like yeah. at least a job go home and meditate and just like come yeah. back to balance at least for the next yeah. day it's like that's another thing about the autonomy yeah. meditation is off limits you cannot and you can't take time to internalize things. I remember asking you, like, can I please, like, I don't want to leave, but I can't handle this anymore. If you just give me an hour a day to just sit with myself and meditate and, like, internalize all of the craziness that I'm going through, I think I can hold on a little bit longer. And they were like, no, you can't do that. Like, it's off limits. They don't let you internalize that type of stuff, which I always thought was really counterintuitive because just sitting meditation and witnessing your thoughts and your feelings and becoming in tune with all of your chakras and just feeling yourself energetically checking in with yourself i've always found that to be extremely beneficial to me in times when i've been especially really out of balance whether it be from work or like i've just been around too much bad vibes for too long of a period of time that's how i stabilize myself yeah. and if i'm not able to do that i don't know it just seems so backwards and the reason Which i feel like that's another topic on that list isn't it is like the you have to be constantly, or that's another bullet point, is you have to be constantly put to work. Debilitating work routines is the next one after denunciation sessions. 
Yeah. And I remember I was actually scared one day when we were planning the Sadashibatwa Adinavasi training. I think that was a program you attended. Um, so mm, it was first batch. Was, you were the first batch. So there was a leads meeting before that first batch. And Ma Pranapriya came up to me. I think I was sitting in the extension AP. And she came out after going into Niti's room after the meeting. So she got like a special instruction more than the rest of us got. And she put her arm around me and said, come, you're going to help me create the schedule for the Sadashibatwa batch. And I said, OK, so how about. Um, I said, so yoga is at 5 a.m. So wake up call is at 4 a.m. Why don't we say 10 p.m. bedtime while they're getting used to the Adi Navasi routine? That way they've got time to shower, wash their clothes. Mm -hmm. And she said, don't be stupid. Bedtime is 1 a.m. And I said, but they wake up at 4. Like, we live that. Yeah. These are new people. It was 3.30. Uh, it was 3.30. I remember. Especially, like, because I was still hyped for it at that point. And I, I remember, like, after the first fun. darshan and being obsessed with it and everything, yes. we went to bed at, like, 1. And, yeah. look two hours of sleep and you're up for yoga and then still just because like I was so into what I was doing at the time like I so enjoyed every bit of it but over time it doesn't start to affect you right away especially when you're in the honeymoon phase but exactly. it's when the blasting kicks in and like the more like when they're more rough with you and like they start being more demanding uh, yeah. that's when the the lack of sleep starts to really weigh on you absolutely and I remember saying to her, like, I think we should really ask Swamiji if we can give them more sleep because they haven't been initiated. Like, I, I was still under the delusion of believing that we had Kuta Kesha, which is like the power to live without sleep. Um, yeah. Because I was so brain damaged from sleep deprivation. That I got I harassed with that a lot because Arjuna was a Kuta Kesha and my name, Parantapa, was like a name of Arjuna. Wow. And that's the I remember Maha Yoga telling me that. Interesting. But I, I just said to her, like, we can't expect these people to live the way we do immediately when a lot of them are not in our awakening grads. They haven't been initiated into this. And she said, so we'll have them initiated into it on day one. But it's a non-negotiable. Bedtime's 1 a.m. Yoga's at 4. They have to be showered and dressed and ready. And then I... You, you I, can't force spirituality like that. Like, seriously... No? um that type of thing especially kutikesha and like going beyond food like me for example like my body is first of all like ayurveda everybody has different doshas yeah. everybody has like different patterns they've had different upbringings it's really hard to just like demand people go on very it's very hard for people who are just demanded to go on no sleep or no food who are not used to that like you're saying and especially like my metabolism is super fast and that's why I got super sick at the Kumbh Mela too. And like pretty much just flushed out all my electrolytes from being that sick. It's because my metabolism is super fast. So being there, it's like, I remember like, I remember when you had to do the social media meetings in the morning and we would miss breakfast because of it. That was like a death sentence for me because like, if I don't eat breakfast before that whole entire huge day of work, it's like, I'm dead. I can't even think. And then yeah. I'm still demanded all the work, the whole work that I, we were needing to do, you have to do it. So like i don't know if they're really trying to encourage people to live up to those standards it should have been a slow burn up to it like it, it needs to be through inspiration not just and he honestly yeah. again, even says like we'd like you've got to enrich through um inspiration but like of course like as soon as you're around him like, it's the opposite of that right. and everything it's is just forced right. on you like you can't even with all of the guru bhakti in the world, you're not going to be able to force your your body to adapt that fast. I mean, maybe if you were like an insane yogi in your past life, but that's like, that's a very rare type of being. Yeah. And the, we're talking about like 500 people from all over the world, from all different walks of life, all different body types, all different body, like skinny thick, whatever you call it, there's tons of different people there and they're all just put under the same entire thing, regardless of how hard it is for some people or how easy it is for other people. Yeah. Like he says like everybody's unique and they're their own sovereign being, but like, isn't that the uniqueness that they're like stepping all over? 
So this was the thing, like when I tried to go to bat for people's rights to a full night's sleep, proper food, that's when I got punished with the title of integrity mentor. And Nitti told me, because you feel incompletion with their lack of sleep, you're the one who has to wake them up and get them to the morning routine. So he, he would take the person who like wishes everyone could sleep and now that person has to be the enforcer of the sleep deprivation. So I remember Janelle, I think it was, started like a petition that Swarupa Priya is sleep depriving yeah. us and she gave it to Nitti. Yeah. He called me to the green room behind Raja Sabha and showed it to me and yeah. said, do you see this? All of these people say you're too ferocious, that you're not letting them sleep, that you're waking them up in the morning. And he went like this and hugged me and said, you've done it. You've done it. You've lived up to my Anyakara. I got I got rewarded for that petition that the people who signed it thought I'd get punished for. And he said they don't the time because you're like so into it. You're just like, yes, like I did a good job. Not even. I was just like, this is so fucked up. Why doesn't oh, he... <laughs> even then even okay. then, Tyler, because I was like the I read that and I teared up. I, I didn't know he was yeah, calling yeah. me to praise me. I thought I was going to get blasted because here's this petition that participants signed saying that they can't stand this lifestyle because I'm too strict. And I teared up thinking I was forbidden from telling people he told me to do this. And so it's like he would make us the bad guys. A lot of those leads, some of them actually, I think, get joy out of hurting people. But others of us, like Ma Yoga, she always wanted to be nice and gentle and kind to the yoga team. I think uh, Drida and yeah, Drida. Really struck me as that way. I mean, like she was always pretty nice. She was. Who were the other leads? Oh, um, Ma Shiva Rupa. Drida and Drida was yoga. Shiva yeah. Rupa and her husband were yeah. doing one thing. And then, of course, like, Rishi and Ma by doing they through cold. Because I remember the Ma Shiva Rupa and I, we used to cry together. Like, I can't believe how shit this life is. And she would tell They me, were a vision team. That's what they were, right? Yeah, and vision team was a hard team to run. Because I was vision head yeah. for like a month. And it was the hardest month there. Um, but yeah, there were a lot of us who, who didn't like to be slave drivers. But we had to be. So I saw this petition and I was like, how fucked up is this that they think I don't want anyone to get a night's sleep when I was the one before the program saying, why don't we make 10 p.m. bedtime? And it's like, now they all think that I'm the bad guy. I was like the one person yeah. to help these people. So that's Even what- still, everybody thinks you're like the worst rock in existence. And you're sitting here like still making videos, getting character assassinated, just being like, hey guys, I'm just trying to help. I'm, like, just I'm not even asking for money, nothing. I'm just giving you information. Please help yourselves. I'm just saying this because it's like, okay, my life is beautiful now. Like, I don't know if you yeah. watch the docuseries, but there's an anonymous lady and she says, I'm so... I who that was, yeah. Yeah, she, she's saying like, I can wake up and make myself a cup of coffee. And then she just started to cry and said like, some of my friends who I spent day and night with are still there. That's such a tough scene. And like, that's why I do these videos. Yeah. It's those people who are still living in that oppressive system. Like the other irony, Tyler, is he tells us the outside world is like the Maya matrix. His cult is the matrix. Yeah, it's like, it, the worst of the matrix embodied in one place. And then it's sugar-coated with a bunch of spiritual stuff to yeah. keep you to, from realizing what it truly is, which is like, it's like using the highest knowledge as a cover-up for the worst crimes. And that itself is just like such an ab abominable crime it against is. people's consciousness. Like that, I feel like that is the thing that is most fueling me to be making this video with you. It's because that's just, that does not sit right with me. No. How somebody could do that. No, it's, it's. Um... People need to know. It's hijacking a person's sacred sentiments. And then how he claims to be the head of all Hinduism, like the head pontiff, his divine holiness, whatever other titles he's given himself. So he's yeah. convinced all of his followers that anybody who 
tells the truth about him is attacking Hinduism. And they feel yeah. like to defend Hinduism. But I'm defending Hinduism yeah. by saying, hey, this is a cancerous yeah. tumor in Hinduism. Hinduism is great. He's bad. Yeah. And they just yeah. don't get it. They just don't get it. I, They'll pick up some... I don't even think they don't get it. I just think they're scared to look. They're not at the point where they're like, I can sit and um, internalize this from my own point of view. They're only operating under this person is a demon. If I agree with them at any point, then I'm a demon too, and I lose my liberation. That's right. Yeah. But meanwhile, I'm not a demon. I'm like, I see yeah. that they're all having a nightmare, and I'm like, hey, guys, wake up. Like life is still good. You can still be yourself, yeah. and you've you've been you've been complete all along. And they're just like, no, that's the nightmare. <laughs> like that's the demon. It's yeah. so it's so it's weird. Like, I'm not the demon. He's the demon. The demon has convinced them that like the good side is the bad side. It's very frustrating. Some true, true yeah. Kali Yuga vibes right there. It's very Kali Yuga vibes. My favorite thing. So okay. That that three part Vice docu series. There's a scene when I talk about Nitti being in the center of the mandala, and then he called me and said, "Like, oh, have Sue Davy sit right here." Whoever did the illustration drew me as Kali, and they show Kali moving through the crowd. I know. And I, know. <laughs> I thought I that um, my whole day. I thought that you would have chose that for yourself, almost because no. I, I know that you have like intense bhakti for Kali. But I was like, huh, oh, that's cool. It they, was, like, embodied her as her higher self. Yeah, they, they showed me as Kali, or Kali as me, and it made me so happy. That one little scene was yeah. like, oh, that's so cool. They heard my story. <laughs> yeah. So I still feel that. I feel like Kali is empowering all of us who speak out. And for him to call yeah. us demons, it's the exact opposite. Like, the actual deities are on our side because we're standing up for truth, which is dharma. Yeah. Standing up for ahimsa to protect the kids who got beaten and abused. We're standing up for brahmacharyam, saying that he's a he's a swami who sexually abuses people, rapes people. So we're standing for brahmacharya. We're standing for ahimsa truth, for aparigraha. Dude, have you seen his bedroom? He's got the nicest air conditioning, elliptical machines, big screen TV, four post double. I haven't seen that, but like, okay. I don't know if you've seen Satsang recently. Like that, you know how he has the Trijuti Rudrakshas, the three yeah. merged in one? Like yeah. anybody who loves Rudrakshas has probably looked up how much that thing yeah, costs because they want one, right? They're 50 grand USD a piece. The, those malas that he wears covered in gold, but that's like a straight $3 million mala. Oh. Like no exaggeration. And he has like two of them on. Dude. It's like, oh, come on. Like, I get that you're, like, even if you justify it from the standpoint of, like, he's holding up her tradition, like, you can hold up a tradition without all of that stuff. Yeah. Listen and if to you me. really want to speak the message of, okay, sorry. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'll save my no, thing. I was just going to say, like, if, if he, if he really wanted to convey the message that he's Shiva and for everybody to be beyond everything, you'd think he would live by example. And just be so powerful that he can come out and be like, I could wear all that gold, but I'm not going to. Because my integrity actually is to you guys. Exactly. But that's, it's not. It's not. And that's what I was going to say. It's like, listen, somebody who's upholding the tradition of Shaivite Hinduism, first and foremost, the Vedic scriptures say the next incarnation who will land on planet Earth will be the 10th incarnation of Vishnu. Of Vishnu. And that she... Kalki, exactly. And that Shiva doesn't take a human embodiment. He's Parma Shiva. He's in the cosmos. He's in Shiva Loka. So for Niti mm -hmm. to claim to be an embodiment of Shiva, that goes against the scriptures. But he yeah. thinks he can rewrite those scriptures. So like another example for speaking in tongues, he got all yeah. of these Nadi leaves and got like a new, ba I think it was the second batch of Sadashivatwa participants to sit in his courtyard I think he gave them some kind of psychedelic because those people were gone. Like when I went to the court oh, to get to the bedroom, they were like, I'm seeing it. It says 
I'm reading this one and it says like Nityananda is the highest God and one day Westerners will be sitting at his feet in the courtyard translating this very leaf and then they're all tripping out over it like whoa it's true it happened <laughs> he was like oh my these, god that these like Grantha scriptures which were like half Tamil half Sanskrit but in an old written mm -hmm. form of the language that nobody today can translate and Nitti was yeah. like tapping people's foreheads saying like, read it, read it, read it. And they were just making stuff up. So he. Of course they would, because what happens if you don't? They just like the Gurukul kids giving like so-called Akashic readings, just making shit up. And so, and he used that in the document he presented to the UN to say that he's like a persecuted minority to say, we have translated Sanskrit scriptures that nobody else has been able to no you fucking didn't you're just bullshitted you just got a bunch of untrained westerners that you probably slipped some kind of deterra to to LSD think that or something yeah i mean and with that being said we shouldn't discredit psychedelics or lsd or anything like that because there's plenty of people who have had really divine experiences on those and there's also a psychedelic in the Rig Veda called Soma, and there's an entire mandala on it. So psychedelics oh, are a part of Hinduism. Don't get me wrong. Like one of, I would say my top five spiritual experiences in this lifetime was on DMT. So I get it. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah. the Tura is a different thing. That's a mind control drug that people use. Like they call yeah. it zombie drug in some places because- oh, damn. If somebody gives a person Datura and doesn't tell them that they're on it, they'll do whatever that person tells them to do. And so is it like a roofie, like a date rape thing? It's like a spiritual roofie. Yeah. Yeah, wow. it is. Only it doesn't okay. lock a person out. It makes them highly suggestible. So I okay. have a theory based on, I forget his name, but there was a guy who made a video about this. I think his name was Cosmic Warrior. I'm so sorry, I forget the name of his YouTube channel, but he he was really good friends with Kodundi. And so she mm -hmm. like brought him to one of the centers to take a program. And he has studied different types of psychedelics. And he said that after eating the Aushara in the Neem leaf before that program, he had a massive trip. That was it was the day Nitti initiated everyone to see Kailash. And I remember that, yeah. Yeah, so honestly that was that was an extremely psychedelic experience. I think I actually made a video about it because it was so psychedelic. Well, like I, I remember no, that was the video that I made. It was like, oh yeah, who who needs psychedelics when Nityananda can just make you experience it for real, but like who knows we actually ate, right? I think people actually ate psychedelics because three separate people have told me that they had liver problems after that aushada. And Nitty's inner uh -huh we're all to, we were all told don't take it like everyone who sat in the tech pit all the team leads and all the sm team we were all told do not take this aushada and then there was activated that's the giveaway right there that's the giveaway like and there was activated charcoal provided for us in the courtyard afterwards if any of you took that aushada take this and activated charcoal is what counters the poisoning effect yeah. to people the yep. tura it absorbs and there were, in your body. They give it to alcoholics and stuff when they OD. Right? And there were Tura blossoms that grew along the Vaidya Sarovar fence. And I wouldn't have known what they were, but Mashivarupa pointed them out to me and says, this is the Tura. It's very sacred to Shiva. So three different people, starting with that guy's YouTube video, said they felt the effects of the Tura, had psychedelic experiences, hallucinogenic experiences. And if you remember for that Aushada, Tyler, Nyanatma was running around like a crazed maniac, making sure to ship the special ingredient that Niti prepared for that Aushada to all the centers around the world. So the Aushada was like- I don't I remember that in particular, but I'm not surprised. But at the same time, I had the Aushada and I definitely experienced some interesting yeah. interdimensional phenomena from it, so. So yeah, I I'm I am ninety percent sure that was a mass poisoning that he gave everyone to Tura. I can't prove it. Um, we didn't save samples to have analyzed, so this is like off the record speculation. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've I've heard a lot of people think that he spiked that Aushada, 
And I also think he might have put things in the program participants' food because he would not let brahmacharis or sannyasis eat the food for the participants. Yeah. And so I, I think well, that he would was, be crazy if that's yeah. true. Because um. he would tell everybody eat every item. Participants were supposed to eat a little bit of everything. And he told us, point blank, the kitchen team puts Aushara in the food. So eat everything. Get the proper mix. Yeah. And they did. Like Mateja's oh. mommy, who was kitchen head at the time, she told me, yeah, they bring us Aushara. We mix it in with the food. But what is Aushara? What is it? Nobody knows. I mean, no, he never told us. <laughs> that is know. true. Nobody <laughs> knows what Aushara is. It's Powder? Other than the Yananjana, which even still, like, I've never seen the Yananjana made. Know what like, that is? All right? the stuff is, like, it's confidential. Like, you don't, it's, it's all secret. that stuff is very not transparent. No. And that's another problem. It's, like, if you're giving people an herb or something like that, like, I feel like it should be, like, a, you should take it to an actual medical facility, have it verified by, like, a government service, and have that like with the person, the credible person's signature on it, that isn't forged, um, and have that be able to be presentable so yeah. that nobody can actually be like, hey, I think I got something in this that wasn't supposed to be there or whatever. Like that would have fixed the whole thing, but it didn't happen. No FDA certification for the Aushara, definitely. Um, huh. Yeah, no, it, it was... Like you said, it was not transparent. It was prepared by Ma Advait in Niti's bedroom. Mm -hmm. eight. So the only person I think in the world who knows exactly what the ingredients of the Aushara is, is the woman who beat kids. So I don't fucking trust her. I don't trust yeah. her. Advait. She beats kids. She takes kids to his room and then leaves and leaves them in there with the door locked while they get sexually abused by Niti. And then she takes them back to Gurukul. Why should we trust her? Yeah, definitely not. Anyway. Is there any more points on the list? Yeah, there are. I'm sorry, I get very sidetracked because there's just so no, much. No, I mean, like, we've both, we've both been doing it. It is a lot. Yeah. So I'm, I'm all for Let's just keep going. Okay. The leadership dictates, sometimes in great detail, how members should think, act, and feel. For example, members must get permission from the leaders to date, change jobs, get married. Leaders may prescribe what types of clothes to wear, where to live, how to discipline children, and so forth. That's literally every single one of those things. Yeah, every single yeah. one of them. And it wasn't just what to wear, like the way Mormons will say, be modest, cover, cover yourself. It's not just like a it's not just like a light version of what to wear. It's like look like a fucking freak wherever you go so society won't accept you. Wear like head to toe orange, rudrakshas here, here, your ankles, have your hair. You look really unrelatable to people. That's the issue. It's like he wants to reach such a mass scale of people, but like at the same time, and he says so much about speaking into people's listening, but when it comes to the minds of just common people, and especially Westerners, if mm -hmm. you try to come up to them, like, talking how they do and wearing all that stuff, they're going to go the other direction. They're going to take exactly. one look at you and be like, these people are being told what to do. Like, these are not free thinkers here. Like, people Definitely. are smarter than that. Yeah, it's true. So this one, Tyler, I think was, like, your motivation for this whole interview. Or, like, mm -hmm. the initial point. The group is elitist claiming a special exalted status for itself, its leaders and members. For example, the leader is considered a messiah or an avatar. The group and or the leader has a special mission to save humanity. Yeah. yeah. Yep, that definitely did it. I mean, yeah, that goes into a lot of what I talked about in my own personal video. Like, yeah. the superiority complex and feeling like we're higher beings and that like I'm literally better than the entire world because I was a Nityananda Sanyasi. When I took that back to the world, the cognitive dissonance that I had was so insane. Like I got destroyed for my actions, just like every other person you see walking on the street. Nobody came to save me. I buried myself in debt. 
I lived in a very horrible, like not just my living situation sucked for like a solid three years. And all the while I'm going through this internal battle of like, oh my God, like I'm a fallen sannyasi. Like, how am I ever going to go back to that point? How am I ever going to get enlightened? Like if I failed doing that, how am I ever going to get back to that state of like absolution where I'm really doing something good? And that just like ate me alive for yeah. years, literally. And it made me an asshole to other people too, because I still so strongly had it ingrained in me that like, I'm still better than everybody else. Like I gave that the example in my own video. Like I remember being on um, like a, a bus in Seattle, just going home and somehow I ended up talking to this lady who is like the equivalent of a Kotari in Sadhguru's mission. And she was like very open hearted to me. She was nice. She was just like, yeah, like I'm, I'm part of that. And I do my own work of like trying to help people with meditation and everything. And I remember just being like, oh, I'm with Nityananda. And then it, it just like ended the okay. conversation there because like he had talked shit about Sadhguru and like he puts down other gurus and everything. So, so like, of course, I've been trained and indoctrinated at least at that point until I like started thinking for myself and realizing that that's a really fucked up for him to do in the first place. Yeah. Um, I literally was just like looking down on her like, God, like this poor being, like she's with this deranged guru who's not doing anything good for the world. And here I am with the best guru in the entire world. And she probably wouldn't even listen to me if I tried the inner trick. That is such a destructive mentality. It's like having personally suffered with that. And I'm sure a lot of people have who have yeah. been in that situation where they've been really integrated to being in coffee and then like just couldn't handle it anymore just yeah. because they wanted the spirituality, but not like all the blasting and yeah. everything else that comes with it. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, to, when when people leave, Nitti and the admin team will say they they weren't integrated. They couldn't handle the vows. They would they would put it on the vows like this person couldn't handle the brahmacharyam or they weren't ready to raise themselves. But you nailed it. They, they weren't ready to be yelled at 24 seven and treated like shit. That's why people you just reach a point where, you know, it's not conductive for what resonates with you spiritually. And then you're like, OK, well, like I can take what good this has given to me in my life and I can integrate it into my everyday life. I just need to get out of here. And then it takes like three weeks from that point. Exactly. Exactly. And then here you just explained this point already, but the group has a polarized us versus them mentality, which causes conflict with the wider society. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the next one, the group's leader is not accountable to any authority, as are, for example, military commanders, ministers, priests, monks and rabbis of mainstream denominations. Yeah. Nitti didn't answer to anybody from the beginning. Nope. Yeah. Uh, the next one, the group teaches or implies that its supposedly exalted ends justify means that members would have considered unethical before joining the group. For example, collecting money for bogus charities. Yeah, I think like the people who are falsely accusing me of rape, they would never have done that before they started following Nitti, you know? I definitely would have. That's like super out of character for yeah. me to like go around like in general. I like I like keeping to myself. I'm a bit of an in, introvert, and that's why like this video is like a pretty big stretch. Like I I really felt like I needed to put my foot down, and that's why I'm doing this. Yeah. Um, but in general, like I will not go out of my way to shame people publicly. Like that's super out of my character. Like I and that's personally because like I was bullied and stuff in high school for being sensitive, and I know what it feels like to get that type of energy thrown at you. And for that reason, I will not do it to anybody else. I just know. And uh, I did do all that stuff when I was a sannyasi. Like you buy right into it. Like, oh yeah, let's make RT Rao look like shit. Let's make Lemon look like shit. Like that horrible, like STD ridded, riddled bitch that yeah. just like abused our guru. Like that's literally what it is. Exactly. I mean, still, like, it, you don't really have a choice in the moment, but, like, um, yeah, it, it is super out of character for a lot of people, I think, who get put in that situation. Yeah. 
I'll tell you Tyler, the day that I knew Arti, Lenin, and Vine were all innocent was the day after I made a Facebook status update about the December 31st beatings. And I went on to Facebook the next day and everyone was calling me an anti-Hindu element. And I was like, whoa, holy shit, they were all legit. Yeah. They were all they were all telling the truth because now the That's the proof. <laughs> yeah. That was the proof for Just me. their like, response oh, to how my... they react to us proves everything. Yeah. Okay, the next one. The leadership induces guilt feelings in members in order to control them. Yeah. Like we've been talking we've been about talking it. about that like the whole video. Yeah. Next one. Members' subservience to the group causes them to cut ties with family and friends and to give up yep. personal goals and activities that were of interest before joining the group. Yeah. And it's masked it's mass under a spiritual context, so you don't really think that it's bad while you're doing it either. But, like, I remember, okay, I'm wearing my little Moldavite pouch now. I remember giving yeah. up all my crystals. Like, I love wearing crystal and gemstone stuff. And I remember there, like, we were only allowed to wear Rudrakshas. And I like Rudrakshas, yeah. but I love crystals. So, yeah, we yeah, gave up. Yeah, right? I have a combination of Rudrakshas, and this is all Moldavite in between them, too. So, <laughs> doing the same thing. That's awesome. Yeah. And, I mean, like, I, I wear my Ganesha earrings a lot when I do these videos because I want Ganesha to remove the obstacles to people, like, getting this. So, yeah. Okay. But, yes. Guilt feelings in order to control us. Oh, yeah. Cut ties with family and friends and interest from before joining the group. I remember Nithi told me, like, even before I was in Kavi, he told me, stop doing tarot readings and start doing Vedic astrology. And I told him, like, I have to learn the system of Vedic astrology. I don't understand the math or the combinations or the, the cosmology. It's also extremely hard. If you d dove into it, it takes, like, a lifetime of studying to even start comprehending the truth of it. It's it jokes, it is such an elaborate subject. Yes. And I love tarot. I feel like that's where my intuition comes through. It's a creative interactive spiritual process so i remember yeah like even before being in kavi he was trying to strip me from the things i could do naturally yeah okay members are expected to devote inordinate amounts of time to the group like all the time had to go to the group. all the time all the time more than and 20 I, hours a day all the time Nitti told people you're supposed to work 26 hours a day, eight days a week, 366 days a year. Like, when we say all the time, we mean, like, all the time. All the time. All no the exaggeration. Not and it was worse for you, too. Like, at least like, I wasn't a lead, so I could get away with, like, if I really needed sleep, I could go out of integrity and yeah. go hide under my bed or something while you yeah. come looking for me. Trying yeah. to get to have everybody share their social and media I, stuff. And I'm like, nope, I need sleep. So I remember, uh, sent, and I couldn't go looking for you because that was in the male dorm. And I remember yeah. sending like other males to look for males who went back. Know, two of them came. Two and of them, then I they remember. Sleep, and then I'd have three team members missing. <laughs> yep. Like I remember sending oh one guy, another guy to wake up that guy. And then I'd have to send another guy after him. And it's like. Each time I send somebody to find those people who have gone missing, one more person goes missing. I remember, like, uh, uh, nobody wanted to do that shit either. And I remember when you finally got me to come back. Um, and you were telling me to, like, go on their phones. Like, a lot of them are, like, too tired. They don't feel like doing it. Like, the social media was, media was just, like, a freaking harassment for people yeah. to begin with. And mm -hmm. I'm just like, okay, guys, I'm sorry. They're telling me to do this. So yeah. you have to do it. Please just do it so I don't get yelled at. And you come yeah. over to me and you're like, you can't tell them that. <laughs> that yeah. We're all going to get in trouble. We're all going to get in trouble if they hear you saying that. But I'm going to get yelled at. <laughs> Don't yeah, tell you're going to get the worse. <laughs> and don't tell them that I said that I'm going to get yelled at for saying that you're going to get yeah. yelled at. Yeah, we all got yelled at. Oh, my God. What a toxic work environment. Holy oh, shit. Yeah. 
Did you know like the, the current members have to be on 24 hour Zoom calls with their team leads and the team is those? Like imagine you're on That's Zoom, horrible. but forever because people stopped reporting in Jira. So now they have to do Zoom. Oh my God. I feel bad for them. And they think we're the demons. <laughs> like, you're right. <laughs> I'm glad, Tyler, that at the beginning of this, you said to the people that you reached out to me to ask to do this video, because I also want to clarify, like, I don't force people to speak out either. Like, I've got tons of people who left the cult who tell me stuff. And I never say, let's do a video. I wait for somebody to ask. Because not everybody... Yeah, I came to you, and I was the one who messaged you saying, I think I want to do a video with you. And you're like, okay, whenever the time is right, yeah. and we can do it. No pressure whatsoever. No. Because I think I also have a little bit of PTSD from forcing people to make videos in that cult. And it's like, I'm never doing that again. Like, this time, whoever wants to make a video. I'm not, like, the team lead of speaking out. Like, no, this is a group effort. Whoever wants to help, help. I think that's what they really think you are, though. Like, they truly just believe that you're sitting here in your room. Like, I don't think they, a lot of them comprehend, like, you're running an Etsy shop. You have a life. You have to go grocery shopping. It's like you can't devote all of your time to just, nope. like, slandering Nityananda all day. Oh. You have a it's life. Not, it's not slander if it's true. Like, I'm sharing my Yeah, yeah. from I their mean, perspective, I'm sure. Experiences, yeah. Yeah, it's true. And also in the early days, like there was a rumor that they spread that I was paying people a million dollars each to do those interviews. Like Joanna Lasoka, Stephen Hodge, um, Jasmine. That you paid them a million dollars? Ma Maha oh. Vidya made an elaborate PowerPoint presentation linking me to the Illuminati, saying that I'm like friends with Beyonce being funded by the Illuminati to destroy Hinduism and that I give people a million dollars each if they're willing to speak out against Nitti. And like even this guy Dennis who has never done an interview with me, he's just like a New York Sangha guy, friends with Vita Shoka. He created the Facebook survivors group and then the New York Sangha started saying like, yeah, Sarah Landry paid him a million dollars to do this. And he's like, what? I don't even know her. Like, he just created a support group because he needed one. Yeah. They're crazy. They're crazy. That's unfortunate. I wish I had the kind of cash flow to pay people a million dollars each to speak out. Right? Like, that would be amazing. I wouldn't be sitting yeah, in a... I'd be set for life for right now. I wouldn't have to pay off my debt. I could quit my job. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Like, where, where's my girl Beyonce, who Mahavidya claims, like, she flew me on her jet when I fled India? Like, fuck. If that was the case, don't you think I would have done a live video? Like, oh my god, look who I'm with! Like, come on. Right. <laughs> Nobody would keep that secret. Anyway. Okay, last point. Members are encouraged or required to live and or socialize only with other group members. Yeah. yeah, 100%. 100%. I've heard that, like, the form, the, like, exit form people have to sign when they leave specifically says, I promise I will never speak to any, any person who, like, any ex-sanyasi, any ex-sangha member, or anyone who spoke out against the organization. So, like, not only when people are in, they can only associate with other members, but even when they finally get the guts to leave, they're forced to sign away their right to speak to ex-followers. So crazy. Yeah, as well as, like, they try to, like, I remember they would take people's, like, malas and atmalinga and stuff like that, and that's, like, a given to you as, like, a sacred gift to connect to your divinity, and they're like, oh, no, you're not divine enough, you don't deserve this. We're exactly. taking it back. Yeah, it's so cruel. It's so cruel. Remember how Nitti would tell us your mother doesn't really love you? She's just, she'll love you conditionally if you do what she tells you to do. But if you don't go to the school she wants or marry the person she wants, she won't love you. And that he's the well, only parents one. Who said that about, yeah. He said that about parents in general. Like there was this, I think mm -hmm. it was this 
the satsang on Mother's Day one year. He said, this Mother's Day, I want to tell you, like, only the cosmic mother working through me loves you unconditionally. Like, the human mother only loves you if you do what she wants you to do. But it's the opposite. Like, since leaving, I've realized, whoa, mm -hmm. my mom loves me unconditionally. And that motherfucker, like, Nitti. Yeah. Was not even conditional love. That was, like, conditional, I won't blast you if you do what I want. Especially for you, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I don't know why. That's what everybody says, is that I got blasted worse than anybody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, from my perspective, you got it pretty hard. Like, yeah. It, it was bad. Like, there definitely were times that you cried real tears. Oh, yeah. Many times, actually. Like, yeah. You were not faking. Anybody who thinks that you're faking, it's like, you can't fake those kind of tears. No. No, it's harsh. It was a harsh life. It was really painful. Yeah, like imagine the like the way Nitti lured me in was through veganism. He told me like the amount of animals you'll save in the outside world as an animal rights activist mm -hmm. is nothing. But if you come take take Brahmachari and work with me, first thing I'll do, I'll make the whole Sangha vegan. And then he gave that announcement. And said, all my international disciples, you have to be vegan or have only Goshala milk. And I was like, whoa, he's actually doing it. And he promised, mm -hmm. like, I could save more animals with him. He said that the world will instantly have, like, every single human being on the planet will instantly go vegan if one million people become enlightened. Because he said, like, yeah. the of enlightened beings is so... I remember that. Yeah, so he, he It's said, like the hundred monkey, monkey effect, but for veganism. Exactly, like the hundredth monkey effect, but for veganism. And so he told me, working for his mission to enlighten humanity is the way to save the animals from factory farms and from abuse and from torture. And so I was like, that, that's what got me in. And I believed him, and I believed he was God. So imagine, like, that person telling you that everything you've done is useless, you're shit for not getting 10,000 people to a program, you should just die because you're a drain on his organization, anybody that you've brought in is incomplete because you're incomplete. Like, it was, mm -hmm. it was harsh. It was harsh. Yeah. It's the reality behind that stuff. And again, it's like, we're talking about, like, Adi Navasi life, like, the inner, inner workings of the Sangha. I mean, honestly, I don't even think we know the inner, inner, inner workings where it's like, that's where the worst of it happens. But like, <sighs> Adi Navas inner level, like, yeah. that's where all this stuff is being seen and everybody's experiencing it. Yeah. This doesn't really happen. Like, again, this doesn't really happen. If you go to like a local temple, chances are you're not going to experience stuff like this. Maybe yeah. like your Mahan will be a little bit forceful on you and be like, hey, you should volunteer and that type of thing. But it's yeah. not on the same level as, like, no. what you experience when you're close to him. Exactly. And, I mean, when we turn off the recording, you've got a story for me. I've got some stories for you, too, that I can't yeah. say in the recording because they'll figure out who I'm talking about. But, yeah. like, there, there literally is sex trafficking going on with some of the girls. I'm, like, I'm not some surprised. Of, I mean. I was surprised. Like, when I heard. Look, look at Kai Lhasa. Yeah. The whole, like, there isn't even a Nithyanath Sangha anymore. The global mission to get in, to bring enlightenment is not there anymore. Every, everything is Kailasa government now. Build the infrastructure wall around Nithyananda so he can't get caught and held accountable for his actions. That's yeah. what Kailasa is. That's it. Of course, on the surface level, Kailasa is standing up for Hinduism. Yeah. And uh, speaking out for Hindu minorities which are getting uh, destroyed by yeah. other civilizations and stuff, whatever. It's all, it's all under this like pro-Hinduism, we're saving Hinduism. Yeah. And if you go against us when we're doing this sacred work, then you must literally be a Rakshasa. But like, yeah. it's the total opposite. If you go to the other side of it, you see, like I know you said uh, one in another video, it's like Wizard of Oz. Like it's literally like Wizard of Oz. Like you see a big, powerful guy who's 
yeah. pretending to be a wizard and then behind the curtain he's just like a like an old man yeah just as can't sad. even work his machine yes that's exactly it that's Nithyananda. like if you strip away the filter that makes his skin look gold the green screen that makes it look like he's in a sacred place like the gold-plated throne that he's if you strip away all the like glamour all the makeup Ranjita puts on him all the like pounds of fake dreadlock hair like he himself is just this sickly man with with diabetes Especially nowadays yeah with diabetes and a heart condition and apparently like kidney failure now he's not even healthy and he's claiming he's gonna live to be 200 years old that's his karma is like Oh, I think he's just saying that. So it's like he's not going to go down. Like, even if he dies, like, he's not going to die admitting everything that he's done. He's going to go out with the I'm part of my Shiva thing till the end. He is. Like, he he's is. never. I yeah. I predict he'll die by suicide and he'll say he's going into Maha Samadhi. And, like, remember he used to tell us to read a book called Graceful Exits about these, like, enlightened yeah. people yeah, who. Yeah. Yeah, so I he used to tell us, even from 2009, he would say, like, I'm not going to die a natural death. I'm going to name the day, name the time, and I'm going to leave my body sitting in lotus posture. Consciously, yeah. Yeah, he'd say consciously, but I'm thinking cyanide pill. Like, he's, he's, he's going to take, like, the cheap way out. I know it. The Jim Jones way. I hope that would not. Be, God, that would be so insane. Honestly, like, if that literally happens, first of all, I really I hope not. That. But it's not like a Jonestown thing. That's like a worst case scenario, of course, especially considering how many how more people are devoted to him than were devoted to Jim Jones. But, like, God. Yeah. Man, that's dark just At to think least, about. At least he doesn't have as many people physically around him. He's got like what Ranjita, the the pilot and the airplane mechanic, those two Malaysian guys. He's got some Malaysian girls, probably Bhairavika Swami, Atma Swami, maybe. He's got like maybe ten people who are physically with him. Yeah. Like the Balajis and the Vinayas, who I've heard come and go. Like he's mm-hmm. maybe like living with him. He might have up to ten people, and then like super wealthy. Shri Mahants who fly in and out, there's probably like five or six who might know where he is. Um, I'm not saying it would be fine if they all get murdered by him in a mass suicide. Like, that would be horrible. No, it would be horrible. I think that's what I was getting to. It's like, that would really be horrific. And even if he alone decided to go out that way, how, like, horrible would that be to be somebody who's still, like, super devoted to him? To figure out that, like, the one who is supposed to be liberating you, just, like, Copped that's out. how he went out. Yeah. yeah. Rapes a bunch of people, then dips. <laughs> like, okay, God. I have fun on this planet. Law's gonna catch up. Oh, my up. God, man. Yeah, bye. No, he's, he's, like, what I was gonna say is, like, at least it's only, like, ten people around him. Whereas Jonestown, it was hundreds of people, including yeah. children. Who, who were killed with that Kool-Aid. Forced at gunpoint to drink the Kool-Aid. Forced at gunpoint. I've heard rumors that he made a bunch of people get tra- weapons training and firearms. So that's like, that's also there. Like, I've, I'm... That I'm, doesn't surprise me at all. I mean, like, Osho did that. Safety. Osho did it too. He probably got that idea from watching Wild Wild Country. Because he made everybody watch that. And he wanted them to be as outrageous as Sheila for his mission. Yeah. Like, what kind of a fucked up psychopath watches Wild Wild Country and is like, yes, that's what we need to do? Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> the kind that I can't comprehend, that's for sure. No, me neither. Me neither. Anyway, Tyler, I think I think we've talked out all of our topics for today. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's getting late. It's like 12.30 here, and I got work in the morning, so I should probably go pretty soon. It's all good. I'm happy to be here. So. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And to everyone who's watching, thank you for watching. If you stuck with us this whole way through, 
you're invested in the story too. Like you're one of us. So thank you for, for being with us and knowing that we're not demons, we're just truth tellers. Um, and we'll see you in the next video. So maybe Tyler, if you ever feel like coming back, if you're like, oh shit, I was gonna say that other thing, the yeah. door is open, we'll do it. Yeah, I would be down sometime to make a video with, another video with you and maybe with Jordan and maybe do like a three-way call or something. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'll ask Jordan for sure. I bet he would be, he'd be into that too. I'm sure he'd be down, yeah. Like the okay. reunion of social media team. We should get Kyle That's and what I was just thinking. It's like the family is back together. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I love it. For totally but, different reason. More karmic yeah. reason. More karmic reason and nobody has to report it in Jira at the end. <laughs> any any last words for our viewers or are we good to go? Um... I feel like the most important thing that I wanted to get across, I said first, just if you do decide to uh, leave Nityananda's cult, you should not be afraid. Really, please don't be afraid. You're not going to get destroyed. It's a fabricated lie. He basically is saying, like, is making a fear tactic because he knows if you go and you watch these type of videos, you're going to see the truth and then you're going to also realize he's not being held accountable for his actions. The whole entire Guru Droha thing is nothing but him trying to threateningly avoid people realizing the truth. Like, like I said, like I know, Sarah, I know you do like amazing channelings and stuff like that too. You obviously still have those type of psychic abilities and stuff like that. I definitely have those abilities still too. You're not going to go out of oneness with the cosmos. The cosmos is not going to hate you for deciding to leave a guru who is out of integrity with everything that he's trying, he's saying he's standing for. Yeah. You like, you'll probably get a closer client connection with existence itself especially if you are so sincere that you've given up your life for him i'm sure existence will actually bless you with all of the enlightenment and all of the blessings that you could possibly ever want by really being fearless and and standing up for what really rings true inside of you yeah absolutely yes that's it perfect couldn't have said it better so thanks again for being here, Tyler. Thanks again, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to leave them below the video. And check the description for the link to my Etsy shop where I sell crystals, because that's how I support myself while doing all of these unpaid videos. Yeah. So again, see you next time. And I'm ending the recording. Oh, if it lets me. Oh no, it's going to be recording forever. I've got the spinning Mac wheel. <laughs> oh jeez. Okay, I think well, I hopefully it saves because like that was so epic. Oh my god, it better save. Okay. It's asking me to type in my my like Apple ID, which I don't remember. Okay. Maybe I have to hit it on my end because I have a button that says stop recording. Oh, cool. See what happens. Let me see. Okay, I hit it. Nothing stop happened. Recording. I think I wrote down my Mac ID in my... Okay. Okay, I think I know what it is. This is so embarrassing. This is I don't what care. I mean, like that's the Apple ID one is literally the worst one. That's the one where I feel like Apple like trolls you, and even if you're typing it in right, it still won't let you in. I know it does troll you, because I've changed it so is there many. Any like send it to your email thing? I don't. It doesn't say. Did you forget your password? It just says Skype one. Your Apple ID and that's it in your keychain to allow this into the login keychain pa I don't even know what the keychain is so I'm just trying all my passwords Jeez.
Oh my god, that's. We have to make it work. That was so long, and there's so much good stuff. I know, because I feel like if I just turn off my computer to end it, it's never going to save the video. Yeah, it's, it's going oh my for sure. God. If we don't hit end, then <laughs> Loco Guano is going to troll us so hard if this whole scene gets like <laughs> uploaded as part of the video. <laughs> oh my god. I feel like it would almost be, it would be funny to like just keep it in there anyways. Just to like show people like we're genuine people laughing at genuine problems. We're not just like we end the video and they're like, wow, let's get back to our Illuminati games. I that's true. It's like, oh my god, I've got so many passwords. Which one is this? Okay, I'm trying one more. You have a lot. I know well, this is like I've got like various combinations of like the same password and I don't know which one it is. Skype wants to export key key from your keychain to allow this enter the login key. Like, really, what even is? Okay, I'm clicking the question mark. Can you, allow apps. Do you know who Local Guano actually is? I did at one point, but I've got so many Facebook friends that I don't remember which Facebook friend it is. Okay. So no, I don't. I would love to know though. Like Loco, if you're still watching this, <laughs> let us know who you really are in real life. Okay, I'm clicking the open keychain access for me. It's closed my Skype window, so I don't even know if you can still see or hear me. I can see you. Yeah. Okay, good. So that means it hasn't ended. Yeah, it's still recording. Apple two, pers two hours, 40 minutes, 45 seconds. Jeez, like what the hell? Location items. Password. What if you Google it. I'm I'm in the like Apple Care thing that you that oh, have okay. like the question mark. Key, public key, login. <clears throat> access control, allow all applications to access this item. Yeah, it's, it's set to allow, not confirm, so I don't know why it's asking me for a password. Huh. So weird. Okay, I'm reopening Skype. Oh no, now it won't even let me open my Skype window, so I can't see that it's still recording or anything. 